Mo members' motion with no legislative effect. Mr. Vincent Chang will move a motion on formulating policy and development blueprints on arts and culture for the next five years. Six members will move amendments to the bill. This council will proceed to a joint debate on the motion and the amendments. Later, I will first call upon Mr. Vincent Chang to speak and move the motion. Then I will call upon Mr. Kenneth Falk, Dr. Stephen Wong, Mr. Yu Pak Leung, Mr. Sunny Tan, Mr. Ma Fung Kwok, and Mr. Lee Chan Kang to speak in sequence, but they may not move the amendments at this stage. The joint debate now begins. Members who wish to speak, please press the request to speak button. And I'll call upon Mr. Vincent Jang to speak and move the motion. Thank you, President. I move that the motion as printed on the agenda be passed. That is formulating policy and development blueprints on arts and culture for the next five years. The new chief executive has been elected. The new government will soon be taking office. We uh, very much look forward to the government structure reorganization, uh, including the establishment of the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau. That's something we've been looking forward to for a long time. In fact, over a decade ago, uh, there was talk about um, setting up a separate uh, culture bureau, but it's never happened. And then on arts and cultural development, I hope the government will try to catch up with uh, uh, especially with some um, software for culture and 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 also there should be um, much faster development. And then more importantly, in the 14 five-year plan, Hong Kong is to be developed into a East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. So we've been given a mission, and that's why I've asked the government to today to formulate a uh, blue development blueprint for the next five years. I would like to listen to members' views uh, in a moment, so that the government could uh, make reference to members' views. And I've actually prepared a uh, proposal on uh, um, arts and culture up to 2027. Um, and, and, and then I will also listen to members today and then I will consolidate our views and put them into this proposal for submission to the government. Now on uh, the um, development blueprint on arts and culture, that's really to promote a better understanding of arts and culture among the public and concluding Chinese culture. And also, uh, we could also build a bigger audience with such development and then with more practitioners, and then we could provide more job opportunities to practitioners. And more importantly, we want arts and culture industries could become an important growth point in our economy. That is the uh, KPI for uh, arts and culture policy. Now we want to develop us and culture in a place, uh, then we could lead uh, the trend and then we could uh, bring people together and then there would be better uh, cultural identity among the public and better confidence among the public too in arts and culture development. Now, um, it's been said that um, arts and culture development must be led by the reference industry. So we need to um, develop um, our uh, cultural and creative industries. We need to build Hong Kong brands and then Hong Kong could become an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. I'm sure you'll agree that's the way to go. Now, yesterday we visited the Hong Kong um, Palace Museum yesterday is to be open in uh, July. We were very excited at the visit. We really look forward to the opening of the museum. In fact, uh, other facilities at, uh, in the whole of the West Kowloon will soon be renewed. And uh, we we have uh, the relevant art, cultural facilities. We have the best talents too. So we do have the strength in arts and cultural development. But for various reasons, the government has not uh, formulated any visions and long-term objectives for arts and de cultural development in Hong Kong. Now we are to be positioned as the East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. So it's time for us to boost our development, and then we could contribute to the. Um, uh, global influence of Chinese culture, we could tell a proper Hong Kong story and China story. Now, arts and culture, of course, cover many aspects, um, universal arts, the performing arts, the publication, uh, and so on, uh, cultural services, and then arts, uh, that includes uh, comics, uh, arts pieces, and so on and so on. Now, of course, uh, we, um, uh, some time ago, I invited members and others uh, to find out more about the development of the sector. And some um, suggestions have been made. For example, we could strengthen our um, cultural and arts, uh, uh, strengthen our cultural uh, in industrial development, and then we could promote um, um, strengthen cooperation exchange with the main, especially GBA, and then we could promote uh, Chinese culture, foster local arts and cultural activities, uh, strengthen arts and cultural education, better conserve uh, and promote um, our tangible and intangible cultural heritage and so on. But because of limited time, I, I will focus just on a few points. First, 
Now, I've looked at the distribution resources of the government in various uh, arts and culture sector. For example, in 2021 to 22, the government um, committed uh, $5.7 million, billion dollars. And then in the past few years, you know, it's been uh, more or less the same amount. But then most of the funding goes to public performance arts venues, uh, library facilities and activities uh, and, uh, and expos and so on. But then about uh, subsidizing the major performing arts groups, uh, uh, it's just $400 million. And then there are some 300 uh, other cultural and arts uh, groups. Um, the funding for them is just $100 million. So it's really small compared to uh, it's a small amount compared to the $5.7 billion. So we need to make the kick bigger, and then we should uh, give more opportunities for all the uh, performing arts groups. They don't, shouldn't be competing for all the same source of faint funding. So I think it's important to review the funding arrangement. Now, uh, on the mainland and Taiwan, they have different cultural funds uh, for specific purposes. For example, in Macau, there is a fund for uh, development of projects and then others and for other aspects as well. So they have uh, different funds to uh, promote the development of different sectors. Second, it's about um, um, cultural consumption vouchers. That's what I'm proposing. Uh, we, there should be a proper funding mechanism. The government should... Uh, set up a commission on uh, cultural industry so that there would be um, precise planning of um, uh, promotion of the development of arts and culture and the creative industries. And then uh, during the COVID-19 epidemic, many of the uh, arts and cultural venues were closed. So uh, there's a loss of practitioners. Now, so, so people have done a lot, but it's not enough because it's really tough to uh, keep going. So could you give them more support? Some groups are saying, say for Cantonese Opera, this morning we went to the Cantonese Opera uh, Center, you, would they, uh, is the venue cost uh, uh, rental too high? Although you say you have re reduced the rent, so you need to give them more support. And then in the past year or two, now we've been um, issuing electronic uh, consumption vouchers. How about um, using part of that for promoting cultural the cultural sector, for example, uh, out of ten thousand dollars, a thousand or two thousand dollars will be spent on, uh, say, going to performances, uh, say to uh, ballet performance or whatever. So, could you consider it? And then today, there's talk about whether um, there should be mission fees to the Hong Kong Palace Museum. So, it's something we should consider. And then, uh, outside of Hong Kong. There are many arts and cultural groups that are doing really well in Asia and in the international arena. There's room for further development. Uh, for example, the film industries and uh, the local, the, the music uh, sector. We've seen good examples. You see that uh, uh, singers from Hong Kong doing well outside of Hong Kong. Say on the mainland and G in Jibei, there is a television uh, program which is really successful. It's a joint production with a mainland TV station. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's got high ratings and so on. And also, uh, many of our, the Hong Kong films are doing well. They have uh, been uh, won many awards overseas. So apart from uh, local development, can, how can we support uh, the, all these practitioners to get out, come out of Hong Kong and develop further, say in GBA and so on. And apart from that, of course, we have to talk about Chinese culture and our cooperation with GBA. In in uh, 2020, the uh, country and um, published the five-year plan for um, development of cultural industry, and there are various uh, uh, festivals and you know free. Um, the Youth Music Festival and so on. So I think we should strive for more such performances to be held in Hong Kong. And then we could bring people from Jibei to come to Hong Kong. Uh, we hope that after the resumption of normal travel, when the express rail line resumes surface, then people could go to Kai Tech Sports uh, uh, State Park for international events and also to the West Kowloon Cultural District for performances and so on. Next, I want to talk about the West Kowloon Cultural District and the, the facilities there. I think the West Kowloon Cultural District is somewhere people should uh, visit uh, because so much resources have been plowed into that. Now, the uh, CE Lack has also said that uh, uh, he, he hopes to turn uh, West Kowloon Cultural District as a cultural hub uh, for the entire country. So, uh, so for the uh, Hong Kong Palace Museum, I hope uh, the government will lead the successful 
uh, development of the uh, uh, of the this project. And then I, I know there will be collaboration with other places around where I hope more people will come to learn, know about the Hong Kong Palace Museum here. Now, I've not been much involved in arts and cultural development, but then for those who are committed, you know, they are in, in good numbers and they're doing really well. And then there are many young people, too, who are keen to uh, join this um, sector. So uh, the, I think the government and this council should uh, help to promote such development. So I hope you will all support my motion. I'll be listening very carefully to the views of members. Thank you. I now put the question to you, to oppose the question to you that Mr. Vincent Jang's motion pass, Mr. Kenneth Falk. President, um, let me um, declare my interest. I am a, a board of director of the West Kowloon Culturing District Authority and it is important for Hong Kong to uh, formulate a five-year development plan for the arts and culture in Hong Kong. So I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Uh, Cheng for uh, moving this motion. And this is really a very good chance for us to discuss this issue. Well, I have uh, made uh, some points of amendment. First, about digitization. Well, this is a trend, a global trend. In the 14th five-year plan of uh, the our country, it is uh, clearly stated that we have to uh, foster development of digitization. And for the uh, 2020 policy address of the chief executive, the government also mentions that uh, it will uh, support uh, further development of uh, the, um, the, uh, the digitization of uh, the, the sector. And they have put in a uh, uh, specified fund to support the development. But then just uh, providing funding support or uh, giving a uh, venue accessibility would not be adequate. And it is not uh, enough to uh, foster digitization of the entire sector. In the 13th five-year plan, the uh, mainland uh, cultural ministry already has laid down a kind of establishment of a digitized platform to support the development of the sector. So in order to uh, transform the sector, we have to to add a bit more effort. For instance, uh, well, some people may uh, videotape a, a, a performance and then put it uh, online. Is, that, is, this, uh, is this enough? Is this dig uh, digitization of the arts and culture industry? I don't think so. I think we have to have other support as well. We have to enhance uh, audience participation and also enhance their uh, experience. So in formulating the uh, roadmap, we have to consider how to come up with a comprehensive uh, um, uh, enhancement of the ecosystem of the arts and cultural uh, sector. We also have to help the practitioners to uh, transform themselves uh, in uh, conducting the work as well. Second, we have to uh, protect um, IP and in industry because this is very important to support arts and culture. We need a protection, IP protection in order to encourage people to continue to work in this field and to continue to um, uh, create and also to entice people to come to Hong Kong. Hong Kong is a kind of uh, a service hub for uh, different IP rights and we also are in a well position to uh, uh, form ourselves as a kind of transaction center for of different IP exchanges. And this could be another uh, engine of growth for Hong Kong's economy. We will also very soon uh, amend the uh, legislation on uh, trademarks and copyrights. So um, actually, there are a lot of loopholes right now. Uh, we should make use of that opportunity to look at how we could plug all those loopholes in the legislation. So I suggest that in our entire uh, blueprint, we have to add into at one point. That is, we should continue to look into how we could step up with the protection of IP rights in Hong Kong. And uh, we should actually play a leading role in uh, this field, for instance, for AI and other areas years as well. Number three, to assist the different brands entering into mainland markets, we have to tell our story well. Well, Hong Kong as a place where East meets West, I think uh, uh, this is actually our ultimate uh, goal, is to tell our story well and tell the Hong Kong story and the Chine Chinese story well. That we have people or, or, or um, offices established in Hong Kong. Um, in the policy address, uh, it is mentioned that the overseas uh, commerce and economy 
economic offices should play a bigger, bigger role in fostering uh, um, exchange and also uh, activities in Hong Kong. Well, because of the interest of time, I will be uh, I will end, end here. I think we have to also assist uh, um, the country to um, let out its soft power to the global arena. We have to work closely with our mainland enterprises as well, and also support that this five-year plan will be just a beginning. We should continue to showcase to the world that we are a place where East meets West, and we will be uh, we are in a good position to establish a comprehensive cultural policy. I would like to have your support uh, on my amendment, Dr. Stephen Wong. Thank you, President. I agree to uh, what uh, Mr. Cheng and uh, Mr. Falk have mentioned. That is the importance of uh, setting a blueprint for the development of art and culture in Hong Kong. Well, this is uh, especially important to uh, promote the healthy development of our ecosystem so that we can attract talented people and young people to come uh, to join the sector. And we should also uh, create a bigger stage for the practitioners of this field. As regards ecosystem, it involves uh, different aspects, including uh, act nurturing of talents, attracting of manpower. Uh, there should be also development of traditional and also innovative industries, and also um, nurturing the uh, uh, the audience appreciation of arts and culture. There should also be co collaboration between innovative industries and other industries. Uh, and also, for instance, collaboration with the uh, tourism industry. So all these are closely connected. We have to uh, look at a, um, a, a, a brick point so that we could start working and then to uh, create a, a healthy development of the ecosystem. I think in order to enhance the um, ecosystem of cultural arts and culture system in Hong Kong, we have to foster digitization and also industrialization. Well, for digitalization, it brings about opportunities for the development of arts and culture. We have Marvel in the US. So there are a different kind of um, um, products uh, come up from that. In Japan, we also have uh, um, a lot of very successful um, um, Films and also creation that are very popular, and then the the movies are also uh, ch uh, performed on the stage as well. We also in Hong Kong we have McDowell uh, local um, cartoons and and uh, Sotheby actually this year have started uh, working with the creator of uh, the McDowell uh, product. They are going to. Uh, uh, auction the NFT of the McDowell um, the cartoons. And also in Hong Kong, we have uh, the um, uh, the kind of martial arts and kung fu um, uh, uh, cartoons. And um, these contents are also being um, rewritten uh, or transformed into kind of uh, online games, which are also very popular among young people. So digitalization can not only uh, enhance the content of arts and culture industry, it will also bring about a new kind of development, uh, a new kind of interpretation of the industry, and also bring in new uh, blood to the development of the industry. It will also enlarge our audience, the audience base. Uh, ultimately, it will bring about the uh, a lively uh, uh, development to the entire ecosystem. So in addition, to industrialization and digitization. Well, this, this would be helpful to content creation and content development. It will give out bigger room for development in this uh, area. This should also be supporting policies and measures, for instance, uh, cultural IP, digital uh, construction, and other uh, supportive measures would help Hong Kong develop into um, a place where East meets West, and also a regional uh, uh, IP rights exchange center. Well, actually, the, our country is also paying a lot of attention to the development in, in this respect. Well, at the be beginning of this year, the uh, 14th five-year plan, uh, under which it states that uh, more effort have to be given to the development of uh, arts and cultural industry, and there should be um, 
more um, efforts or stepped up with the support. For instance, there should be nurturing of talents and there uh, should be the establishment of research labs and also uh, relevant platforms to foster the development. So all in all, in different aspects of um, arts and culture and also innovative industry, there are a lot of people who have been working in Hong Kong, which is a very special place where East meets West. And they have also made um, substantial and outstanding achievements. So I believe that if we use the Greater Bay Area as a, 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 a kind of a way that uh, we could leverage on, we could actually uh, insert more um, life and new blood to uh, the life, to this industry. And I believe that Hong Kong is positioned to tell the, the story well. Thank you. Mr. Yu Pao Leung. Madam President, first I would like to thank Mr. Cheng for moving this uh, motion. As stated in the original motion, uh, the central government has uh, stressed that Hong Kong should be positioned or developed into a place where East meets West, and it should be an East meets West center for international cultural exchange. We have a new positioning, we have new infrastructure and new we should also need new policies and new blueprint so as to insert a um, new growth impetus for the development of arts and culture in Hong Kong. My suggestion is uh, to uh, add on the existing motion. Actually, the um, uh, merging of arts and culture with uh, travel. It's a global trend. We're not saying that arts and culture should uh, work according to the development of uh, tourism. And we're not saying that uh, arts and culture should service uh, tourism. Um, on the contrary, I'm saying that arts and culture could work hand in hand with tourism so that uh, we, they could attract more audience and people who would appreciate arts and culture. And at the same time, we could attract people or travelers to come to Hong Kong uh, in addition to appreciating Hong Kong's um, uh, uh, scenery or uh, food, we, they could also appreciate the arts and culture of Hong Kong. So this is really a very good um, point to attract travelers. We have um, different uh, 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 activities or scheme promoted by the uh, tourism board. For instance, we have Tycoon, we have the PMC, and also different activities in the old districts in uh, Hong Kong Island. Uh, for instance, in Paddock Street, there are also a kind of uh, traditional uh, buildings. So these are all very um, uh, attractive spots to uh, attract uh, tourists and travelers. Uh, both local and overseas. So we have, in order to provide this kind of uh, culture uh, tourism, the government uh, should provide um, support. For instance, there should be adequate um, access accessibility route, transportation, uh, public toilets, and so forth. And we should also consider whether the community is uh, can. Um, embrace or has the capacity to provide this kind of cultural tourism. Well, we are uh, still facing the uh, epidemic, but then um, we do have other uh, facilities that are opened one after another. For instance, West Kalu Cultural District and so forth. We also have uh, new facilities that are to be commissioned soon. So I believe that uh, with the resumption of normal travel, we'll have, we will have the opportunities to stage large-scale event and performances, uh, in, including uh, international um, events. So I believe that uh, together with MICE, that is uh, uh, the, um, a convention and an exhibition activities, we will be able to attract high-end um, tourists to come to Hong Kong so that Hong Kong can become really become a district uh, or, or uh, where is meets west. So how to uh, promote the development of cultural tourism? I have two points to make. First, G to G, that is government to government. The SAR government should uh, not only work with its mainland counterparts, but also uh, enhance integration and coordination among its uh, uh, own departments and bureaus. So um, the next uh, the government is going to uh, have new department, for instance, to promote the development of sports and culture, arts and culture. Second is B to B, that is uh, business to business. I believe that the people in the arts and cultural sector 
can have a room of collaboration with the tourism sector. As uh, Mr. Uh, Kenneth Falk has uh, organized uh, an event to promote communication between the two sectors, I think this is really a very encouraging sign. I believe that there are great room for collaboration between the two sectors. And I believe that the uh, tourism industries will be able to uh, introduce Hong Kong and to attract tourists to come to Hong Kong and appreciate arts and culture in Hong Kong. Madam President, I think the tourism industry uh, has been uh, um, one of the strengths of Hong Kong's economy. We have been able to attract a lot of uh, travelers to come to Hong Kong. and. Um, uh, people can come not only for shopping, for good food, for nice scenery. They could also come to appreciate arts and culture. And we have a very special uh, city, uh, which is very unique. So we hope that the uh, tra transport or travel will be resumed very soon, so that we uh, can we are all positioned to attract uh, tourism to come to Hong Kong again. Thank you, Mr. Sunny Ten. I'm the director of the Hong Kong Design Center, so that's uh, my declaration of interest. Now, Mr. Vincent Zhang is moving this motion on formulating policy and development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years. I have uh, proposed an amendment so that government could enhance support for local fashion designers to promote Hong Kong's fashion design brands as a way to promote uh, arts and culture in Hong Kong. Now. Um, in the 14 5 year plan, the central government gave support for Hong Kong to develop into a, an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. And fashion is a way to tell a good story about uh, China and uh, Chinese culture. The President Xi Jinping said many times that uh, we must um, enhance our say in the international community. We have to tell the China story well, and we should make the Chinese voice heard. So um, arts and culture is a soft power for us to tell the Chinese story well. And so we need to reach out to, to an extensive sector and covering as many people as possible. And fashion design is one way to do that. Now, fashion design brands are trying to include the Chinese element so that um, um, Chinese tradition is, in, is uh, branded into uh, the latest trend. For example, uh, for the Year of Tiger, we see limited supply edition of um, fashion with um, tiger design. And then um, the uh, uh, China, they have this um, federation on the textile and garment, garments uh, industry. And they say that uh, by 2035, their objective is to become an uh, important leader of uh, fashion trends, and then they and then they uh, to build um, fresh, different fashion brands with Chinese elements and features. So this is exactly what we can do in Hong Kong. We have this uh, advantage to support the uh, the development of the country in this respect. Textile and garment industry in Hong Kong has uh, over several decades of history. Uh, we are an important uh, member of the international textile garment sets, uh, um, community. We, in 20, uh, we have over 134 listed uh, companies on uh, fashions and accessories. So um, Hong Kong businesses have strong influence in this sector. And now we also have good uh, R&D capacity. Now, uh, in the 2022 Geneva these, uh, these, um, Festival, we won some many awards. And then Hong Kong people are rated the most fashionable. Uh, so because we uh, follow the trend very closely, also we have produced many talented designers. Many of them have worked at international brands, so they've had exposure to um, high and um, fashion products, and these, they, of course, they are important talents. They could help uh, the country to go into the international market. Now, textile, and garment, and fashion design are all closely linked, uh, so we have advantages in all these areas. And then, there, so th there's a bright future for the sector. And then, um, we could uh, achieve uh, the goal of the 14 5 year plan, that is a uh, Chinese spirit, a uh, design, and so on could all be promoted, and then we could have greater say in the uh, fashion um, sector. Now, uh, everyone has to be clothed, and with clothes, of course, there must be design. 
So fashion design is therefore a walking carrier of uh, arts and culture. Now uh, we have, uh, you know, t uh, technology, uh, marketing, and other elements involved. Now, if the government could give further support to pro uh, promote Hong Kong fashion design brands, and we could see immediate result, and then uh, that will make make Hong Kong a better. Uh, well, that will make Hong Kong an uh, East meets West Centre for International Cultural Exchange with um, fashion leading the trend. Thank you. Mr. Ma Fung Kwok. Madam Deputy, first of all, I would like to thank Mr. Vincent Jane for moving the motion so we have this opportunity to discuss the uh, debate, the, uh, the way forward for arts and cultural development. Now, the 14 5 year plan gives um, distinctive support to Hong Kong to become an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. This is new mission for Hong Kong. This is also recognition of the past achievements of Hong Kong in this area. Now, Hong Kong uh, has a deep um, tradition of um, Chinese culture, and also we uh, are much exposed to international culture, so that's uh, where we have a, a new deck advantage. We want to tell the Chinese stories well in the international arena, and Hong Kong is a good uh, choice uh, to help with that. We have the advantage of uh, being backed by the mainland, and, it is, and at the same time, we're an international city in the GBA development, so we should seize upon these new opportunities so we have new growth engines. Now, if we want to succeed to become an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange, must, we must first boost our own um, strengths in this area. Now, uh, our strength is on the various uh, visual arts, performing arts, uh, uh, and also in the past few years, we've invested much in hardware. Uh, for example, the West Kowloon uh, Cultural District, whether on um, talent nurturing and uh, ask education, we don't have any new initiatives. Soon we're going to have world-class arts uh, and cultural facilities, but then we're not doing like uh, what's, uh, what Singapore is doing. We don't have a um, dedicated uh, college uh, for training. So we want to step up training of talents. I think there should be more... Uh, uh, so I'm saying that, uh, so I'm suggesting we should strengthen arts and cultural education of students through the education system, um, that we could um, then seize upon the opportunities of, uh, with uh, new talents, and then we could also build a bigger audience. Compared to neighboring places in the past decade or so, the uh, Hong, the, the pace of development for arts and culture in Hong Kong is relatively slow. Now, in Macau, it's already set up a new office to promote arts and culture. And in 2013, they've set up a um, fund. And in 2014, they um, have come up with a five-year plan to set their goals and way forward. And then uh, from uh, in terms of tourism, technology, and so on, they are promoting arts and culture. Hong Kong is just uh, uh, a few steps away from Macau, but we're not doing enough in such promotion. In fact, uh, we are not faring any badly than other places in terms of our um, potential. But then we don't have a specific um, positioning for arts and cultural development. We don't have a dedicated office to lead such development. And the government also will not be applying enough into um, the development of hardware and software. So Hong Kong must have a long-term policy for promoting arts and cultural development. And then we should also uh, promote um, uh, arts and cultural literacy uh, among the population. And then uh, we could make the most of our free and open society advantage. And then we could uh, promote creation, creative uh, uh, thinking, creative th uh, creativity. Now, as we if we want to do a good job in promoting arts and culture, the government is more than just a promoter. It should also be a facilitator. It should consider how we could uh, promote exchanges among cities. That's why I suggest the government should set up a dedicated um, arts and cultural exchange fund. So with uh, funding support, we could um, help uh, local arts and cultural groups to have um, two exchanges with overseas groups. Many members have pro um, proposed amendments today. It shows that they are all very concerned about the development of arts and culture, and that's a good thing. 
And then uh, I support uh, their amendments, so I hope the government will consider all these rules very carefully, and then the new government could do a good job in promoting arts and culture, so I speak. Mr. Michael Lee. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I would like to thank Mr. Vincent Jang for moving the motion. In the 15 5 year plan, the central authorities uh, gave support to Hong Kong to develop into an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. That's um, a major booster to the development of the sector. And also, many have high expectation of the proposed uh, culture, sports, and tourism bureau. Many in the sector hope that the new bureau the, will bring their new hope. I and the Liberal Party would like to um, make a number of points. I hope that uh, the current government, uh, in its transition to the new government, they would um, do the, the work properly, especially as they plan the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau. I hope they won't just work behind uh, closed doors. They must uh, uh, talk to the stakeholders in the culture, sports, and tourism sectors so they learn about the unique advantages of Hong Kong in these areas and then uh, take the, uh, f forward uh, the development of these sectors. Now, uh, at the beginning of the year, during the fifth wave of the epidemic, uh, over 10 different types of uh, uh, scheduled premises were closed, including performing arts uh, uh, venues and so on. Many practitioners uh, had no work and no income. So the government should formulate uh, contingency plans in future so the sectors could be more prepared. And also the government should give them support and subsidy and other support so that um, uh, practitioners could uh, uh, do online performances uh, ov uh, both in Hong Kong and overseas online. Uh, well, more importantly, governments have um, proper anti-epidemic targets. Uh, they have to say specifically when measures will be tightened or relaxed uh, if the epidemic reaches a certain level. Then the reference sector will know in advance uh, what might happen and they could respond uh, accordingly. And also, on the promoting the creative industry, uh, other than hardware, software is essential. That's why talent nurturing is very important. The government should work very hard to uh, cultivate interest among young people in arts and culture. Many in the sector are saying that uh, we don't have the right condition for such development uh, because the pie is too small, so it's hard to um, entice young people to join the sector. So therefore, the government must do more to have better integration with the mainland. For example, in GBA cities, there should be a one-stop liaison office to help the sector uh, with uh, the regulation and, and move into the mainland market. The, the office should, could help them to overcome all the uh, challenges and uh, hurdles, and then the pie could be made bigger. And uh, after the government structure, uh, uh, reorganization they um, they should work there should be cooperation with home and youth affairs bureau education bureau and so on so that uh, say for primary and secondary schools there could be more interest classes and also uh, cultural exchange tours and then there should be more support to uh, local groups uh, say uh, for street dance uh, ballet dance and so on for these groups uh, uh, the government could help them to um, develop the mainland market. And then the government could also work, uh, talk to the Ministry of Culture and Tourism to uh, seize, uh, to um, create more opportunities. And there could be also dozen tours of uh, more temples and so on that we could learn more about Chinese culture and history. Finally, I and the Liberal Department suggest the government should um, um, have additional manpower, especially under the uh, sports, uh, culture, sports, and um, tourism bureau. There should be more manpower, and there should be proper division of work, and there should be a um, performing a sports uh, and cultural office to be responsible for implementation of various policies. Now the CE select elect says that he's result oriented. So we need to um, formulate KPIs on arts and culture. The government should also formulate uh, KPIs for us to assess the performance of the government. For example, 
um, the attendance uh, rate uh, and uh, percentage, the GB, GDP percentage of arts and culture and so on. So these are all areas uh, where we could uh, measure our performance in arts and culture. For a long time, Hong Kong has been labeled the cultural desert. Many say that the government's not been attaching importance to arts and cultural development. So I hope uh, the uh, uh, government will do something to uh, um, support the development of Hong Kong into an East East West International Cultural Exchange. Thank you. Secretary for Home Affairs, Madam Deputy, I'm grateful to Mr. Vincent Jen for moving the motion, and also to Mr. Kenneth Falk, uh, Mr. Wang Yunshan, Mr. Park Hyo Leung, Mr. Sunny Tan, Mr. Ma Fong Kwok, and Mr. Lee Chan Kang for their amendments. This allows us an opportunity to discuss in the Council the uh, policy and blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years. We are grateful to the country for its support in the 14 5 year plan towards Hong Kong to develop into an East Meets West Centre for International Cultural Exchange. We are very much encouraged by this. To accomplish this mission, entrusted to us by the country, we will spend no efforts in developing, implementing various policies and formulate a development blueprint for arts and culture. Arts and culture is the soul of a nation. Internally, it is the binding force of its nationals, ethnic groups of different strata that unites the whole nation. Externally, it is also a bridge to connect with peoples from other parts of the world. It is also a media to showcase the nation's achievement, confidence, and soft power. Hong Kong has a rich heritage of our fine and grand Chinese culture, and it's also a place where Chinese and Western cultures meet. Over the years, we have built up a wide international network. We have outstanding tenants, talents from locally and from the mainland and overseas. We've always been the place for international cultural exchange. On one hand, we can showcase Hong Kong's special characteristics as a converging point of modern arts and cultural and Chinese culture. At the same time, we can allow the world to have a better and fuller understanding of the country. Therefore, we must consolidate Hong Kong's cultural position so that we become the center to showcase Chinese arts and culture to the world and to promote the influence of Chinese culture in the world. A rich arts and culture asset can enhance Hong Kong's status as a world metropolis and a livable city. It can make Hong Kong more attractive to overseas talents. It can also help to develop cultural industries with economic vibrancy and benefits providing a diversity of quality jobs and startup opportunities to our young people. The Hong Kong self-government has always been promoting arts and culture development. Our recurrent expenditure in these areas have been ever-increasing. In this year, the SL government's recurrent expenditure in arts and culture exceeds $5.9 billion. Compared to what it was five years ago, that was in 2017-19, at the start of this term of government, there's been a 40% rise by $4.3 billion. Through the LCSD as well as its cooperating partners, such as the Academy for Performing Arts, the Arts Development Council, major performing groups, and the WKCD Authority, the government has adopted a multi-pronged approach in promoting cultural exchange and uh, to support the long-term development of arts and culture. 
Besides, we've got eight major creative industries in Hong Kong, namely advertising, architecture, design, digital entertainment, films, movie, printing and publishing, as well as TV, all uh, possess good potential. They are the driving force as well as uh, new impetus for economic growth in Hong Kong. The government has operated through two subvention schemes, i.e. the Creative Smart Initiative and Film Development Fund to subsidize the sectors to participate and implement various projects that suit the objectives of the two funds to nurture talent and to uh, develop startups, to explore markets, and to foster a creative environment in the community. The government has in total injected $3 billion in these two schemes to promote further development of uh, our creative industries to integrate with the country's overall development and to build Hong Kong into Asia's creative capital. To make Hong Kong an East meets West culture for international cultural exchange, the SL government in its 2021 policy address mapped out five major directions for development to um, develop Hong Kong into an East Meets West Center for International Cultural S S Exchange to make good use of our characteristic as a place where East Meets West. Now, these five directions include developing world-class cultural facilities and a pluralistic cultural environment, two, uh, to strengthen our connections with overseas arts and culture organizations. Three, to enhance cultural exchange and cooperation with the mainland. Four, to leverage technology. And five, to nurture talent. The SL government will continue to consolidate and leverage Hong Kong's unique advantage and move uh, towards the goal of developing Hong Kong into an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. We will accomplish this mission and trust to us by the country. I will listen very carefully to views from members and I will respond later. Thank you. Mrs. Regina Ip. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak to support Mr. Vincent Cheng's original motion and also the amendments from six colleagues. Hong Kong has been positioned as an East West East West Center for International Cultural Exchange under the 14th five year plan. Now the WKCD's hardware is almost complete. The Palace Museum can be commissioned uh, in the middle of this year. We've also got the uh, East Kowloon Cultural uh, Zone, which will be completed next year probably, and it's cost us $400 billion. Now for the software aspects, I agree with members' suggestions. We must promote the development of creative industries. We must uh, promote our cultural exchange with other cities in GBA. We should support our fashion design industry. We should also uh, set up uh, the Bureau uh, for uh, Culture and um, also uh, Tourism. But I uh, would like the Secretary to enlighten me on the following with regard to the suggestion by Mr. Wong Yun Shan. Now, we have uh, proposed to the central authorities and uh, the request has been accepted, and that is we should develop into regional intellectual property trading center. And Mr. Wong Yun Shan said that we should uh, make good use of our Positioning in this regard, I'd like to know how we can do this. Now, for international trading, uh, there is um, copyright and then patent and design, and third is uh, the fourth is trademarks. I um, frequently uh, write and I've also published books. I fully understand that uh, you have uh, the copyright of your own uh, writing. You have an agreement with uh, the publisher and uh, 
who owns your copyright, and then uh, you can have a share in the uh, proceeds uh, from the uh, publications. But uh, for patent, it is very different. Uh, we talk about scientific invention, which can be put into practical use. Uh, what is meant by uh, patent trading? Now, for copyrights, uh, you cannot trade it in an open exchange. Usually, uh, the agreement is between the creator and the uh, TV station or the publisher. And, and what about patent? And what about design? Now, I think um, for IP Trading Center, we're talking about patents. Where have we seen successful trading of patents openly? I understand that the Trade Development Council once wanted to develop in this area to no avail because uh, when we talk about uh, trading of patents, you have uh, to do a lot of research. You have to uh, put a valuation for a certain scientific invention, and there must be research in legal aspects. Has there been any lawsuits? Have there been any um, uh, lawsuit on infringement? So we need a lot of experts uh, for valuation. Scientific and technological and uh, legal experts are required. Do we have uh, these talents in Hong Kong? Where in the world do we have trading of uh, patents. Now, assume that you were talking about patents instead of uh, uh, copyright or, or design or trademark. I hope the government can explain clearly. Do not mislead the public into thinking that we can have a patent exchange uh, like uh, futures and exchange and uh, stock exchange. I hope the government can uh, clarify this so as not to mislead the industry. Thank you. Dr. Lo Wai Kwok. Madam Deputy, first I'm grateful to Mr. Vincent Chen for sponsoring the original motion and also uh, the amendments from the other six members. The purpose of the motion is uh, to move good use of Hong Kong uh, so East Meets West Center and to formulate policy and development blueprints on arts and culture for the next five years to enhance the knowledge of Hong Kong people about Chinese culture and upgrade the cultural appeal of Hong Kong. Myself and the BPA uh, support this motion to develop creative industries where we have good advantages. We have the unique advantage under one country, two system, and there is also explicit support in the 14 five year plan for Hong Kong to develop into an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. And the government has uh, attached increasing the uh, higher uh, significance in this area, and uh, the facilities in WKCD will be commissioned gradually, including the one commissioned last year, M+, plus, and also the Palace Museum to be commissioned later this year to promote the development of creative industries we rely on three things. First, we must have a sound framework. We must have more resources. The government has proposed uh, to uh, set up a culture, sports, and tourism bureau. I think we should have a commission for creative industries with uh, the participation of experts and outstanding uh, personnel in this area from overseas and from locally. And uh, we should also provide money to set up a creative industries development fund so as uh, to enhance talent training so as to promote sustainable development of this sector. And we must uh, uh, write on uh, this uh, tide of uh, using uh, digital development. Now, since the outbreak of uh, the uh, of COVID-19, we have seen uh, many e 
or, or cloud exhibitions and cloud performances. And the industry has been uh, exploring different ways of performance. The government should also collaborate very closely with, with the industries so as to have cross-boundary cooperation. Culture should incorporate of tourism. We should have um, tourism facilities in Hong Kong, and we must enhance cooperation exchange with uh, other places. We should enhance the promotion of our products in design and uh, publishing, etc., industry, so that we can help uh, the sectors to tap the mainland market. And we should hold more events, uh, such as the Asia Performance Arts Market, so that Hong Kong can be the um, center for exchange of culture. The uh, C election was successfully held on the 8th of May. Mr. John Lee uh, won Why support to be the next CE. He proposes a free competition and to link up with the world and to consolidate Hong Kong's position as a world metropolis. He um, has a lot of uh, thinking about our cultural policy. It's about deployment of resources and coordination uh, within the government so that we can um, make Hong Kong a center, a cultural center. I'm sure with the concerted effort of different sectors of the community, we can become uh, East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange and also a place of events. Uh, with these remarks, I support the original motion and the amendments. Thank you. Mr. Martinel. De Madam Deputy, I speak to support Mr. Vincent Jang's original motion and also the amendments from six members. Arts and culture is a media for communication and exchange. Now is also a sign of the soft power of a country. The 45-year plan supports Hong Kong to develop into an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. For the first time, Hong Kong's um, position, uh, the cultural position, has um, uh, been in our country's plan to realize this position or this plan, we must have a proper five-year plan. And it hinges upon two things. First, how the SL government helps the sector to develop arts and culture. And second, how Hong Kong can tell the China story well. It's true that the government has deployed a lot of resources in developing the hardware and software aspects of arts and culture, and we're beginning to uh, see results. Now, we can have pilot scheme to support the sector to use technology, and there should be more time for a uh, test run before performance, so as to help the industry to overcome the challenges. And sometimes the distribution or allocation of resources is not balanced. The government must review its current funding and operation mechanism, and there should be flexible tax concessions to encourage private enterprises to sponsor arts and culture. Um, we don't have enough resources to promote arts and culture overseas. We can. Uh, borrow from the practice of South Korea. In this reorganization of the government, once the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau is set up, we can have uh, outstanding personnel from the sector to help to develop the creative industries. We must uh, revive the work of uh, amendments to the copyright ordinance. Together with GBA cities, we should set up a database for uh, corp intellectual property so that we can become a trading center, cultural, tourism, and uh, also our arts assets can be 
and also industries can be incorporated. Now, for telling the China story well, we should enable the world to understand China. We have um, free flow of uh, people and uh, and um, Hong Kong people are generally proficient in English, and therefore we usually do a good job internationally. But then to tell the China story well, we must understand uh, Chinese history and also Chinese culture. Through publicity and public education, the government should en enhance the cultural literacy of our people. We should understand the uh, development process of China. At the same time, uh, Hong Kong's interpretation is just as important, and that is our ability to tell the story well. Many renowned arts groups have regular exchange with uh, their counterparts in the world. Our advantage our lies in our good interpretation and our Interpretation is usually more acceptable to other places. Now, to be an international cultural exchange, well, that doesn't mean that uh, this should be monopolized uh, by the experts or the industries. We must uh, continue to deepen the popularization of arts for instance, uh, we should have uh, more arts and uh, culture activities in the community to enhance uh, people's understanding in these areas and to enhance our standard of exchange. Thank you. Mr. Lam Chen Singh. Thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I would like to thank Mr. Vincent Chen for proposing the original motions of developing a five-year plan for the arts and cultural industry in Hong Kong. To develop arts and cultural industries in Hong Kong will not only bring uh, economic uh, benefits to Hong Kong, it would also create local employment and provide opportunities for young people to realize themselves. It would also um, meet the needs of the uh, local people in appreciating arts and culture. It is also a way for us to show the soft power of our country as well as Hong Kong to the world. In the uh, 14th five-year plan, it is clearly stated that Hong Kong should be developed into an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. So what we have to do is to create this Hong Kong brand. I hope that the next uh, term government could uh, step up with its support to the development of arts and cultural industry. The government should also um, do a good job in coordinating various de government departments in promoting the development of arts and culture. It should also show a comprehensive and integrated development plan of arts and culture in Hong Kong so that we as citizens of Hong Kong can know what uh, the blueprint is and uh, we can see how we step by step are achieving towards that goal. Well. Hong Kong actually uh, lacks the software support and hardware support, uh, software support in the development of arts and culture. We do have hardware facilities. We have uh, world quality uh, infrastructure like the Amplus Museum, the Hong Kong Palace Museum, and so forth. But then, in order to uh, foster development of arts and culture, we do need uh, government policies to support that. We have to think of uh, ways to nurturing local talents and also people, not just in arts and culture, but also creative industry. We should also support the local practitioners to go into mainland market as well as the markets overseas so that Hong Kong traditional culture and also the culture of uh, the, the Chinese uh, culture could be promoted worldwide. Well, it takes time to develop arts and culture. I agree that we should have form a commission on arts and culture and also set up an art and culture fund so as to continuously support the development of the industry. And uh, we should also uh, step up with uh, talent, uh, nurturing of local talents, and also raising the awareness or appreciation level of local people uh, towards arts and culture. I think all these are important. With the development of uh, science and technology, I think the merging of science and technology with arts and culture becomes a 
uh, development trend. Mainland China, Japan, the UK, um, they are all making good use of um, science and technology to uh, present, use a different way to present arts and culture to the audience. It brings about totally new immersive um, experience in appreciating, uh, appreciating arts and culture. Well, it involves technology, including software, um, app, uh, development, um, AI, and so forth. So I think the government should uh, nurture uh, talents in science and technology and also broaden our local talent base. It should also uh, foster the uh, Negotiation, uh, foster the exchange and collaboration between the science and technology industry with the arts and culture sector. I also agree that we should uh, promote more uh, local um, tourist products, such as cultural tourism. Well, it is suggested that six hundred million dollars should be injected to uh, promote local tourist. Uh, uh, brands or routes um, whereby people can appreciate uh, the uh, Hong Kong history and also cultural relics in Hong Kong. Government will also uh, inject $60 million to uh, sponsor the upgrading and development of the local practitioners in tourism. Well, this is a good beginning, and it is uh, very encouraging. If the results are good, I suggest that the government should continue to uh, uh, support uh, the uh, tourism industry. I think uh, we should uh, now uh, explore ways of attracting people to appreciate arts and culture, history, and uh, heritage of Hong Kong instead of just a place for shopping or just eating out. I think Hong Kong should uh, c come to a higher level. We should be a place where uh, we have arts and culture and cultural exchanges. We have different uh, tourist uh, products for people to appreciate arts and culture. and. It should also uh, have a sustainable uh, a way to develop sustainably. Ms. Chen Huayen, thank you, Madam Deputy. First, I'd like to thank Mr. Vincent Cheng for proposing the um, original motion of setting up a five-year development plan for arts and culture in Hong Kong. Well, in the past, when people are talking about the development of arts and culture in Hong Kong, they will often uh, criticize the government for not giving uh, enough uh, financial support. Well, actually, I don't agree to that because every year the government uh, put in more than four hundred million dollars to support a nine major uh, arts group in Hong Kong, and and also the government has uh, spent more than uh, or put in more than one point seven billion dollars to support the development of local arts group and the arts practitioners. Well, I think it's uh, it's not that uh, uh, financial support are lacking. I think it's just that uh, there is a, not an effective allocation of these funding support. Well, that's why I agree that we should have a blueprint so that we can have an overall and uh, a plan with specific goals and objectives so that we can have a um, effective support to the local arts groups. I also look forward to the next term government. Um, after reorganization of the government structure, there should be a specified bureau to look into the work of the development of arts development in Hong Kong. We could then consolidate the resources and also integrate the work of the different departments so that we can have a coordinated effort in fostering the development of arts and culture in Hong Kong. There should be a long-term plan, a clear goal and objective, and also a roadmap so as to help people uh, develop um, arts and culture in Hong Kong. I also agree to the original motion that there uh, should be a, the establishment of an arts and culture fund so as to provide a kind of basic financial support to the um, arts group and creative industry in Hong Kong. But I think this is only step one, because even with a, f um, a, a relevant fund, it is not enough if we do not have uh, the necessary talents, the performers, or the audience base. So. We had to have all these uh, factors together. So we should not just develop towards the high-end uh, industry. We need to have arts and cultural landmark, but also we do need to have a kind of local arts and culture activities. My other point is that I hope the government should uh, support local arts groups so as to and so as to uh, support them for uh, sustainable development. And I think um, arts and culture should not be too far-fetched. We should aim at uh, promoting or l nurturing local people in appreciating arts and culture. 
Well, regarding uh, land, I think land is most important if we are to support the development of arts and culture. We do need performing venues and also um, uh, different uh, spaces uh, for the uh, work of the arts group. Well, in the past years, uh, there were arts groups who uh, rented industrial buildings to uh, carry out their creative work. But then because of um, the... the uh, development of the Hong Kong situation, the rental have been uh, rising very high and the local art groups would then, find, found, then found it difficult to continue to rent uh, premises in the industrial building to conduct their work. So I wonder if the government should look for alternative uh, premises, for instance, the vacate, uh, vacant uh, school sites or industrial buildings, so as to provide venues for the local art groups to continue to uh, do their creative uh, work. As we all know, on mainland China, for instance, Guangzhou, Shenzhen, and even in Taiwan and Macau, they have similar development plans and government measures. Uh, there are sort of um, uh, vacated or uh, uh, industrial parks, and uh, the, the government would uh, use this place to uh, provide it to the local arts groups for creative work. So this is very important, and it is a step for the arts group to uh, start their work. And of course, this kind of arts creative park uh, is um, not the uh, only way to solve the problem. Well, let's look at Macau. They have um, four industrial, uh, uh, four cultural uh, uh, development park, and the government, uh, Macau government, would uh, support the local art groups to have uh, the kind of uh, the free. Uh, rental for them to uh, showcase their creative works. So um, this is a way to help the young or the new practitioners in the sector to uh, start their work. Well, of course, on the other hand, uh, it is not enough if we only have financial support from the government, but then if we do not have enough audience base, then um, there is no use. It's just empty talk. So in order to further develop arts and, de arts and culture, we should uh, make use of the government resources to uh, foster um, the development of audience base so that the art groups could become self-sustainable. Uh, thank you. Mr. Edward Leung, thank you. Madam Deputy, I speak in support of the uh, uh, original motion as well as the subsequent amendments. Well, in the uh, past uh, week, the media reported uh, 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 some part or some activities of mine. Um, actually, uh, when I was studying at university, I had the music dream. I formed a a group and participated in a film festival in the U.S. We made a, um, a, a micro film and then we won uh, the, the 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 first prize for uh, during the film um, um, event for the film festival. We really had a passion at that time. We had a passion for movies, films, and music. Well, because. We actually uh, grew up with uh, uh, Chinese uh, Canton pop and also TV series and so forth. Well, at that time, Hong Kong really enjoyed a great reputation for the Hong Kong movies, uh, TV series, and local Canton pop and so forth. They are all um, are very popular um, um, around the world. But then when I look back and, and also uh, look at my friends, actually they have they have actually changed course. They have not continued to pursue our dreams. They have uh, uh, joined the uh, pro professions uh, as an accountants and also lawyers and so forth. So uh, people say that if you work in this industry, arts and culture, you you are bound uh, you are bound to be uh, poor. You you can't uh, get a wife because uh, you can't make money. But then how about the local artists like Chow Yun Fat and um, Fei Wong and so forth? They are so successful. Why? Because they have the passion and they are willing to sacrifice themselves. They have the adventurous spirit to really pursue their, their goal, and eventually they've become very successful and um, become a stars in Hong Kong. Well, if in Hong Kong right now, if more and more young people are willing to pursue their passion and their dreams and not mind, um, uh, would not mind uh, uh, that they have to be suffering from poverty, I think it's impossible because in Hong Kong, this is really not practical. Practi uh, not uh, 
practical. If you look at Korea, um, actually there are government policies to support uh, the development of arts and culture. Well, in people are developing already very uh, in a very advanced state in other countries. What Let's look at uh, South Korea. They have actually formed a Ministry of uh, Culture and Sports and Tourism. They actually um, have uh, culture, uh, tourism, and arts all grouped together under one ministry. But then they are doing very well. Why is that so? Because uh, arts and culture are actually closely um, tied in with tourism. When the music and TV shows and also uh, uh, films are very good, the K-pop are very popular, then people are willing to visit Korea. They would go as tourists to visit uh, Korea. And then after that, they will go home and then listen to uh, the Korean music and watch Korean movies and so forth. So that is. Um, that is why arts, culture, and tourism can join hands together. And I, I support uh, what the uh, CE has said. Uh, she mentioned that there will be a, a new bureau um, that groups together arts, culture, and tourism and sports. I support that move. But the more important thing is that we should have a very clear roadmap and, uh, and, and objective. We hope that uh, young people who would not have to worry that they can't make a living if they join the arts and culture sector. I hope that they will just be very free to pursue their dreams. Uh, the joining the arts and culture sector, they can still make a living and uh, can make a good achievements. Thank you. Mr. Benson, look. Ms. Jofi Chen. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak in support of the original motion and the amendments. Hong Kong is where we have a um, uh, cultural center. This is our unique vantage. In Hong Kong, we have uh, Eastern culture and Western culture. We also have uh, Ling Nan culture specific to the Great uh, Bay Area. We also have Hong Kong style of culture. So all these different uh, cultural elements would enrich uh, the diversity of our, our cultural sector. It provides good soil for um, the growth of our young talents. So uh, already some years ago, um, Hong, uh, you know, over ten years ago, it, the cultural industry was considered uh, was. Uh, you know, earmarked as an important industry for the remember that we didn't do very well. Now, at, the, at best, we have the additional hardware of the West Kowloon Cultural City uh, uh, District, and it's took it's taken decades to develop this district. And then in uh, pop culture, we're not doing as well as other area, places now. Now, many young people in Hong Kong uh, may have uh, started uh, dancing and singing when they were young, and then. When they grow up, they may uh, be have acquired a professional um, skills of uh, singing and dancing. I went talked to some uh, young girls, um, you know, practicing dancing at a community center. I talked to them, and they used their spare time to uh, do rehearsals and practice for performance in Chimwan. And I asked them if they would turn their hobby into a career. They all said no, because uh, if they make um, arts and culture a career, they don't have a stable income. In Hong Kong, we don't have m many opportunities. In 2019, the arts and culture only accounts for 4.7% of our local GDP. So if you compare that to the, the K-pop culture, that's 6.75% uh, of uh, the GDP. And instead of Kanto pop now, uh, K-pop is prevalent. When I talk to these young dance groups, uh, group, uh, I ask them again if uh, there are the opportunities. Would you be interested to stage performances in Greater Bay Area and other cities? And they all said yes, but then they don't know how they could uh, seize upon such an opportunity. So, uh, for um, arts and culture, it allows for diversification of our industrial structure and also young people 
could also contribute to the development of the GBA, taking advantage of that. But then the SL government is not doing that for us, so that's why the central government has uh, um, made plans for us. In the 14-5 year plan, Hong Kong is uh, to leverage on this uh, advantage. And then we could further expand the concept of the East Meets West Center, and then we'll become an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange, and Hong Kong will become a unique brand around the world. Now, uh, apart from the Pearl of the Orient, we could also be a cultural capital. Now, uh, apart from listening to views of young people, I also consulted the reference sector here. I would like to thank Mr. Ko Chi Som, a well-known director, because he's offered many, uh, much advice to me. Now, uh, Mr. Cole pointed out that uh, when it comes to promoting arts and culture in Hong Kong, the biggest problem is that uh, those uh, responsible officials don't have uh, the um, the perspective. And now uh, maybe they they will be um, exchanges uh, with other places, but then uh, photos taken and that's it, no follow up. So there's no way that could promote um, uh, cultural exchanges cooperation. The government would have spent money, but then. Um, uh, nothing more is achieved other than that. So uh, we shouldn't just be st um, ho hosting uh, or holding exchange ses uh, tours. More importantly, there has to be joint production. We want to, um, you know, pr produce uh, works. That's the, that should be the target. So I could give an example to the government. And uh, uh, recently, a Hong Kong TV station jointly produced a um, singing show show with a mainland TV station. Uh, Hong Kong singers could would uh, compete with uh, mainland um, singers. So our um, well-known Hong Kong singers uh, bring Hong Kong music to to to. to to the mainland, and also they also um, help uh, the young, newer singers to uh, Hong Kong singers to become known on the mainland. So now Hong Kong singers are among the best in Asia, and so we need more joint production to promote this development. And in um, developing the five-year blueprint, I hope the government will consider that. Thank you, Mr. Lai Tong Kwok. Thank you, Madam Deputy. Uh, I want to say that in arts and culture, uh, this is one area that uh, most have overlooked. Now, I wonder if you know this. Uh, for the resources provided by the government on the promotion of arts and culture, where the bulk of that goes? Now, in the 20 to 21 budget, we can use that as an example. 27% of the spending went to public libraries and activities. So it's the same percentage as that for arts and cultural activities. And it's a spending of um, $1.5 billion in each case. So how come libraries are using up so much resources and still uh, library services are, are overlooked? And then with arts and culture, probably what comes to mind first to us is a museum, high-end uh, uh, artifacts, or uh, uh, art pieces, or um, uh, operas and concerts and so on. So these are areas that uh, we could build the Hong Kong brand. I agree we need to proactively promote arts and culture, but at the same time, uh, libraries are also important if we want to promote arts and culture. The Ministry of uh, Culture and Tourism has published the, a 14, uh, 14 five-year plan for development of the cultural industry. An important mission is to build a people-based library. That's something the SL government should learn from. In future, if we are to formulate a development blueprint on arts and culture, 
for Hong Kong. I hope uh, the government would not leave out libraries. Now, libraries must put people first and they must move with the times and keep up with uh, social development. In recent years, there's a change in the way libraries are used around the world. Readers are increasingly using digital library services. But then in uh, the public libraries in Hong Kong, they have now two information systems. That is a um, uh, multimedia information system and a new century uh, library system. Well, these systems are, are reaching their, um, um, their serviceable life and the hardware also cannot be improved and enhanced any further. The government now is uh, developing a brand new smart library system, but still is uh, lagging behind. Uh, I understand that it will be in 2025 before the system could be commissioned. I hope the government will make sure that the new system would be commissioned as scheduled and there won't be any delays. Now, libraries in Hong Kong are now um, staging various promotion activities. Some are rather popular among the public, and so that meets the criterion of uh, putting people first. Uh, for example, in many libraries, they have uh, story rooms, and uh, many parents will take their children to the local libraries to take part in such storytelling sessions. Uh, I think we should enrich the content of such activities, and we should, um, you know, um, train children from a young age to um, get into the habit of reading. And the best way to promote reading is to start uh, when at a young age. Now, there's a retired school principal in Hong Kong uh, that the principal is taking the lead to set up a um, charity foundation on reading. For the past decade, um, the foundation is building libraries in uh, rural areas on the mainland, and then there are also um, ways to promote um, interest in reading. That uh, fund and then it's been working really well. Now in Hong Kong, we may have various li libraries and library offices, but it seems that uh, they are not doing enough. So there's still room to do more. Thank you, Doctor uh, Professor Dennis Lam. Thank you. Now Hong Kong has always been a center where the meets e e east meets west. We've been an international metropolis, and. Uh, that uh, in uh, arts and culture, um, film, movies, uh, music, uh, design, and we could all see this uh, unique event, uh, this unique feature. And then in recent years, the government's been doing much to improve hardware. For example, the West Kowloon District, for, uh, uh, cultural district, the East um, Kowloon Cultural Center are being built is being built as well. And then in Hong Kong, we are regular stage various uh, mega cultural events. For example, the Art Basel. Um, French May and so on. This shows that uh, in Hong Kong we have international connections, so we are well positioned to become the East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange, as um, stated in the 14 Five Year Plan. So we have the target now. We need to make a plan to achieve that target. The motion, the original motion here, is to urge the government to formally. Um, Policy and development blueprint for the next five years on arts and culture. I very much support that. I hope the government will set form the will set up the uh, culture, sports, and tourism bureau. It will become a high level or uh, body to coordinate the uh, development of a policy and blueprint for arts and culture. And then for local arts groups, uh, the, um, they will get help to go into the mainland and go out to the world too. And then they could uh, make the most of their existing advantages, and then we could um, fulfill the mission given to us by the country. And at the same time, we could seize upon the new opportunities of us being coming uh, an international cultural exchange center. And then, so then together, we, we could also promote the development of local groups, and then we could promote uh, exchanges of talents and so on. Now, of course, we need f uh, land and financial support for th this to happen. Now, uh, just now it's mentioned that um, 
we are seeing in continuous improvement to the arts and culture hardware. But then we just um, uh, the the provision of this venue is just uh, catching up with uh, what we lacked in the past. The West Kowloon Cultural District is a world class um, facility. It's got a high uh, threshold, so that's why local arts and cultural groups may not be able to use the facilities there, and that will stand in way of uh, development of arts and culture. In fact, in Hong Kong. We are seeing a steady increase in the number of local arts and cultural groups uh, in terms of uh, the demands for uh, performing and rehearsal venues. That, that's only increased, but then there is a short supply, and so rents are going up. Now, according to the Lecture and Cultural Services Department, uh, we have a venue, say, at the City Hall and um, com uh, community uh, co uh, the cultural center and so on. The usage rate is high. And now industrial buildings are being used uh, for rehearsal, but then rent has uh, gone up substantially if in industrial buildings. So there's no, not enough, uh, there are not enough venues for rehearsal. So the government should consider the needs of the arts and cultural sector and help them find um, the space they need for their private development. And then over the years, the government may have be, um, been providing resources to support the promotion, the development of arts and culture, but that's not enough. Right now, um, such spending only accounts for one percent of government's total spending, and then the resources are um, um, distributed to the nine major uh, art, performing arts groups. Uh, for the smaller groups, they don't get enough much resources. And then uh, we also have film development fund and other uh, funds, but then um, so the smaller groups only get uh, the, and um, support for, f of, you know, every two, three years uh, to the tune of one, two, two to three hundred million dollars. And that's not enough. So there has to be a communication platform that supports the regular exchanges and discussion with local groups. And, and also there should be platforms on um, tr uh, arts trade and, so, and cultural trade. And then um, uh, local groups will learn more about the mainland development and before we could uh, be integrated into the mainland development. So I speak in support of the original motion and all the amendments. Mr. Chang Kapiu. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak to support Mr. Vincent Chang's original motion as well as all amendments. And I'd like to take this opportunity to reiterate uh, my uh, viewpoint on uh, strategy. In 2023, the East Kowloon Cultural Center will be commissioned. Now, in uh, the past decade, we have had the uh, WKCD, and I think the East uh, Kowloon Cultural Center is really the only uh, large scale venue for the community to use. So, what is our uh, arts and culture? Where are our roots? Hong Kong is an international city, and uh, we keep asking uh, what is meant by internationalization. Uh, does uh, it mean that it's uh, something uh, from the U.S. or from the West? Now, I think we are really constraining our own development, and therefore we must uh, interface with ASEAN. So we should let our young people know that in terms of culture, religion, politics, and arts, well, the world is a place with diversity. ASEAN is a miniature of um, different cultures and religions. Now, why do I say ASEAN and East Kowloon? Because we have a lot of soft facilities there with uh, fine Chinese tradition. Now, in 2025, the only Confucian College in Hong Kong will be established uh, there. And this is a realization of Chinese culture. And uh, the most important religious uh, facility in Hong Kong is the Wang Taishin uh, 
temple and also the uh, Yun Monastery. So, East Kowloon is a meeting place for um, Confucian schools and uh, also uh, different religious, and then uh, we can repackage this good thing. And ASEAN can be our good partner. Why do I want to interface East Kowloon with ASEAN? Because we can let our young people know that uh, the world is not just about the U.S. and the Western countries. There can be various modes of development. ASEAN is a very a vibrant place with rapid development. Every time I ask about ASEP and what strategies do we have to ensure that we can uh, join, the government always talks about the uh, trade and economic aspect. This is so boring. I think um, interchange among or between peoples can uh, be multifaceted. And we have uh, provided a lot of resources to promote folklore, arts and culture. So ASEAN and uh, East Kowloon. East Kowloon should not just be a cheaper mode of China of a uh, central I think uh, we can be a vibrant place a place for arts and culture as well thank you Mr. Ronnie Cheng thank you I am grateful to Mr. Vincent Cheng for sponsoring the motion and also uh, the amendments from six members I think we should learn from the experience of the mainland and other places, we should make good use of our advantage as a place where East meets West, and we should formulate a policy and development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years so that we can enhance our cultural appeal. The 14 5 year plan has got a dedicated chapter on Hong Kong and Macau, and is given explicit support for Hong Kong to develop into an East Meets West Card Center for Intellectual Cultural Exchange. Um, Carrie Lam uh, indicated support for this, and she mapped out five areas uh, for us to implement or to realize uh, this target. Uh, we, Our economy has suffered a big setback because of the epidemic. After the epidemic, we may be able to attract tourists back to Hong Kong. But our strength in culture and arts will also be an attraction. So after the epidemic, while the government launched measures to revive our economy, it should uh, promote our attractiveness in arts and culture as well. 40 hectares of uh, land at the waterfront has been um, earmarked to become a hub for a cultural development. Just yesterday, we visited the Palace Museum at WKCD. It would, uh, the facilities will be commissioned in phases. And then uh, the East Kowloon Cultural Center mentioned by Mr. Tang Kapil will also be commissioned in 2023. We have different performing uh, venues of different sizes, 16 uh, museums and the Hong Kong uh, Films Museum. We have the Heritage uh, Center and also uh, various venues. Last year, the government spent $5.7 billion to support venues and uh, groups, and that is not taken into account uh, the money spent on building facilities yet. It goes to show that by uh, building uh, various hardware and also uh, providing recurring expenditure to support uh, groups, uh, we are trying to build up our arts and culture. But then in the coming years, the government should uh, switch from becoming a builder to a promoter. For instance, we should uh, 
at Hans Cultural Exchange. We should make good use of our facilities so that we can really become an international cultural exchange center. I also support Mr. Vincent Cheng's suggestion that we should change our mode of subvention to arts groups. We should um, model on the concept of a consumption voucher so that members of the public can use uh, the voucher to uh, enjoy arts and cultural activities they prefer. In this way, we can promote the development of the creative industries. And there should be uh, more cooperation in terms of breadth and depth uh, with uh, the private sector. The government should link up the arts and cultural sector with different sectors of society. For instance, interest groups by schools and promotional activities in shopping malls, they may want to add um, local uh, flavor to uh, the activities. And the government should provide financial support to these activities so that we can have more cross-sectoral cooperation. And I agree that there should be integration of uh, technology and art. Now, digitalization has brought facilitation, and I think that this can help us to upgrade our arts technology and help the industries to move towards a high value added development. And we should move towards innovation and diversity. Madam Deputy, I support the motion as well as all the amendments. Thank you. Mr. Kenneth Leung. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I'm very grateful to Mr. Vincent Zhang for moving the motion and also the amendments by six members. For a long time, Hong Kong is a meeting place for East and Western cultures. We've got the WKCD and the East Kowloon Cultural Center to be commissioned soon. That laid a very good foundation for uh, the development of Hong Kong into a center for international cultural exchange. However, we have uh, had um, talents uh, from uh, overseas in this in these sectors. This is a way to enhance our competitiveness. But then we should also integrate outstanding talents from Hong Kong. Otherwise, no matter how many WKCDs we have, we are just building up venues for overseas performing groups to perform. And so we must attach more significance to nurturing local talents. It takes years to nurture our own talents. This is a challenge, and I have got some suggestions for the government. First, we must lay a good foundation, starting from arts and culture education for our young people. We can start to uh, promote more STEAM uh, in um, the uh, school curriculum. We should add arts to the STEM curriculum. I think schools are not um, setting enough of store by uh, arts education. In fact, uh, we can uh, showcase the potential of arts integrating with technology so as uh, to uh, expand the diversity in contents of um, arts so that in the long run we can have uh, arts tech personnel to enhance our standard in this regard. We must uh, reform the admission criteria of our universities. At present, they attach too much significance on academic results, and the uh, pressure on core subjects is too high, and uh, arts, sports uh, subjects are just as secondary to core subjects. Many students who like uh, arts and sports are forced to give up uh, ball games and uh, painting habits, etc., as they move to senior secondary classes. We should allow young people with um, different uh, talents to uh, pursue further studies, to find a way out for the future career so that there can be diversity in their occupation. Now, when we have reformed our university admission uh, criteria, parents will be encouraged to allow their children to nurture uh, interest in arts and culture. We can enhance uh, the 
appreciation ability of our community as well. This will help us to nurture talents uh, for uh, the creative industries, and this will also help the future development of the industries. We must build up uh, the audience before we can support a sustainable creative industries development. And there should be more interaction uh, between institutions and also the sectors so that the uh, relevant industries can uh, be more professional and through exchange and interaction, uh, the uh, petitioners then, then accumulate experience. And uh, we should also promote uh, mutual recognition of qualifications between Hong Kong and the mainland. So when young people want to engage in arts and culture, they can also um, develop in the mainland. Because in the mainland, they have a dedicated uh, vocational system. So our uh, Institutions uh, should seek mutual recognition of uh, qualifications with the counterparts in the mainland so that we can um, make a new way out for our young people. We must expedite uh, the training of tenants from uh, basic education to uh, post secondary education so that we can allow our arts and culture to flourish. Thank you. Ms. Lam So Wai, thank you, Madam Deputy. I'd like to thank uh, Mr. Vincent Cheng for proposing the motions and six other members for moving the amendments. Well, Hong Kong uh, has been uh, working towards the development of industries and commerce and economy, but that not many people uh, have a passion for arts and culture. However, things have been changing in recent years, and the government is fostering the development of a uh, exchange cultural exchange uh, center where East meets West. We also have the commissioning of a lot of cultural infrastructures, including the West Kowloon Cultural District. Well, uh, culture and arts can uh, enrich the spiritual uh, life of uh, the citizen of Hong Kong. It could also raise the image of Hong Kong in, on the international arena. And recently, uh, different places in the world treat arts and culture as a kind of soft power. And uh, they are actually uh, putting arts and culture together with uh, the sort of key industries of the company. Let's take South Korea for uh, as an example. They have uh, the promotion of K-pop and uh, K-culture, which is very successful. And it has become an, a growth engine for the economy of South Korea. So in Hong Kong, looking back, um, to Hong Kong, uh, we do have our potentials in uh, developing arts and culture. For instance, Hong Kong is a place where East meets West. We have uh, are deep rooted in uh, the Chinese culture and history, but also we uh, have uh, close contact with the outside world and uh, have contacts with um, uh, the Western culture. So uh, under the 14th five-year plan, the central government uh, supports uh, Hong Kong to develop into an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. This is really very encouraging. However, Hong Kong in promoting arts and culture is actually lagging behind. There are a lot of constraints. For instance, uh, arts and cultural policies have not been integrated, and the works are uh, scattered in different government departments. And the government is uh, acts just like a kind of organizer for arts and cultural activities. It is not policymaker, and it is not actually pushing the development and not laying the foundation or the policy directions for the development of arts and culture in Hong Kong. Well, in recent years, the government has shown improvement. Uh, it is uh, according greater importance to the development of arts and culture. However, with the uh, commissioning of the uh, West Kowloon Cultural District, they are, the hardware are here. We do have the infrastructure. However, there are still, uh, we're still lagging behind um, uh, other kind of uh, performance venues. Some uh, small to medium-sized arts groups find it difficult to uh, rent their performing venues in such uh, government infrastructure. Um, they actually move to some industrial buildings in order to uh, lower the cost. So 
they actually are um, exposing themselves to some legal risk, and this is um, not a satisfactory situation. Well, on the other hand, the development of arts and culture um, needs. Um, to be uh, integrated with the living of uh, local people. There are like uh, street music and also uh, uh, busking activities on the streets. They are actually uh, very lively, and they could actually uh, add the kind of flair to this uh, city of Hong Kong. But then, unfortunately, in the past, the Hong Kong government has not been very supportive, to, and there is no policy measures to support uh, this kind of activities. And in 2018 and August, uh, the pedestrian um, Zone had been cancelled, and so people have no more venues to perform their uh, busking activities. So I hope that the government can uh, change their policies and try to support this kind of performing groups, especially local talents. And also, I think the government should explore uh, using more public uh, places for um, local performers to uh, perform uh, to make their performances. And also, there are um, cultural exchange between Hong Kong and mainland, and um, there are uh, a lot of local groups that want to perform on the mainland. However, they are not uh, well known in, in the mainland market. So I hope that the government would try to um, neg uh, would try to liaise with the mainland counterparts, or maybe sign some sort of agreements so that a local performers could have more opportunities to perform on the mainland. Uh, on mainland. Well, I basically uh, support the proposed um, uh, original motion. Thank you. Mr. Lokofan. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I'd like to thank Mr. Vincent Chang for moving this uh, motion on formulating policy development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years. I'd be prepared to support both the original motion as well as all the amendments. I think it's timely for us to come up with this uh, motion on uh, development of arts and culture because uh, under the uh, uh, 14th uh, five-year plan, um, Hong Kong is to be developed into a centre for uh, cultural exchange between the East and the West. Um, and yesterday we went to the Hong Kong uh, Palace Museum for a site visit. And uh, coming up, we're going to have a very good venue for displaying um, arts and cultural exchange between China and the rest of the world. I think this is a very good venue. And also in NT North, uh, there's a lot of land available for arts and culture um, to develop. And today, many colleagues have already given a lot of good views concerning arts and cultural development. In fact, uh, both myself and the DAB have also proposed that uh, we should uh, promote the development of uh, GBA's um, cultural and um, uh, creative uh, industries development. So while we are c considering how we can do a good job in the future, what I can see is uh, I'd like to take advantage of this uh, platform to say the following. However good we do a job in terms of arts and cultural development, we can see that our young people and our uh, public, even if they wanted uh, to go to a concert, it would be hard to get a ticket. And um, that would be it would be hard for them to buy a ticket. I was uh, also the chairman of the uh, Home Affairs panel. And uh, I remember four years ago, back in 2018, there was already this um, discussion on uh, our crackdown on uh, speculative uh, tickets and so on. So um, we have discussed um, on different occasions as to how we could uh, re uh, adjust um, the ratio of um, uh, tickets uh, for internal sale only. And also we could also introduce the um, real name registration system and also increase the penalty for speculation on such tickets and so on. And also the um, public entertainment um, um, venues legislation could also be um, amended in order to ensure that uh, even if the people try to um, sell scalper tickets, um, they would also be punished. Um, and yet, uh, no progress has been made so far in this regard. So we've been talking about uh, what we should do for the future, and we should provide better support uh, for arts and cultural development. And yet, when you look at what has happened so far, 
Well, despite the fact that the administration might have come up with the future direction, and yet no step has been taken in that direction at all. All right, uh, for the crackdown on scalper tickets, nothing has been done at all about it. Uh, whenever there are popular concerts coming up, uh, we would always discuss this issue. So when would the administration come up with the determination to crack down on this? Yes, I can see that uh, a lot of opportunities have been created uh, by the um, construction of these uh, venues. For example, there was a suggestion of this uh, uh, real name registration system and also with the vaccination pass. Uh, well, wherever you go, if you go to a particular venue, you would also have to um, uh, scan the QR code. Uh, so when people have to go to a venue for a performance or for a concert, uh, What's wrong with um, having their names registered so that uh, we would be able to um, crack down on scalper tickets? Indeed, some of the organizers would also like to see the introduction of uh, uh, the real name registration system. And yet, uh, for concerts held at uh, the Hong Kong Coliseum, apparently that cannot be done yet. And therefore, I hope that this can be implemented as soon as possible with governments uh, restructuring and uh, with the setting up of the new Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau, I think um, that would also give us some fresh air because uh, different bureaus might have been very busy and their plates have already been full in the past and therefore um, arts and culture might have um, accumulated a lot of problems that have yet to be resolved. And therefore, with the setting up of this new bureau, I hope that some of the um, long-standing problems can be resolved. And um, in our discussion today, uh, there are a lot of good suggestions. Thank you. Dr. Uh, John Eaton, Madam Deputy, I'm grateful to Mr. Vincent Cheng for moving this motion on formulating policy and development blueprint on arts and culture for the next uh, five years. I'd like to declare interest. I'm a member of the Arts Development Council. Arts and culture and performances um, are very important and therefore if we are able to develop that properly, then we'll be able to display how rich a culture we have, and that would also um, show how inclusive we are, and also the sense of um, uh, happiness would also be further promoted. And therefore, I agree with this motion and also most of the uh, amendments. I'd like to have the following suggestions. We should step up our support uh, for the nurturing of uh, arts and cultural groups, in particular for the younger budding groups, so we should give them more support. Through the um, Home Affairs Bureau and also the Arts Development Council, uh, we are providing support uh, to different groups in order to nurture some budding groups in Hong Kong. And yet uh, there are views thinking that uh, the current support is not adequate because we would not be able to encourage long-term support. According to the uh, studies, uh, between 2019 and 2022, the nine major groups uh, have got uh, a total of uh, some $440 million support. Uh, if you look at uh, some 300 groups and so on, we're talking about uh, some $140 million given to them. Uh, it's about three times, and we believe that uh, that funding should be further increased, uh, and we should give more to the budding groups so that they should be encouraged to do more innovation and creative and have more creativity. Because uh, very often they will have to rely on government funding, and they are also developing, and they will also have to upgrade themselves in order to move up the ladder. And therefore, for the budding groups, if we are able to give them better funding support, uh, they would also be able to improve uh, themselves so that we will be able to have more diversified and uh, robust development. And also under the 14 five-year plan, it stipulated that uh, Hong Kong should be developed into a center for cultural exchange between the East and the West. This is a very important opportunity. So the government should provide uh, policy support as well as uh, the hardware. Uh, but then more importantly, we should also nurture the talents. And therefore, we should um, uh, step up our support uh, for the nurturing of talents. And we should also seize the opportunity derived uh, from the GBA so that uh, there can be better convergence. Uh, and more talents should also go to the GBA for uh, work and also for, to, for starting their business. And we should also have uh, Academy of Arts. And we should also encourage uh, institutions to set up a uh, Departments, for example, uh, the Poly U has uh, this uh, um, develop uh, has this uh, arts and culture uh, academy or department and so on. So the APA would also have dedicated uh, branches, and we should provide better support so that they could also go to the mainland for to further their studies, so that Hong Kong's arts and culture can also be promoted elsewhere, in order to promote uh, the exchange of talents, in order to create a synergy effect. 
all in all, I would expect that uh, the SAR government to do a better job in nurturing talents so that more young people can also join in the profession. We should also encourage them to use uh, IT and innovative te technology to create more space so that uh, there would be a new um, landscape for Hong Kong. Thank you. Mr. L uh, Kenneth Lau. Madam Deputy, I speak in support of the original motion by Mr. Vincent Chang as well as all the amendments. Arts and culture is the soul of a city and is also an um, essential part uh, for the conversion of uh, economy and uh, arts. Uh, and therefore, under the 14 five year plan, we're going to uh, develop ourselves into uh, a cultural exchange center. And that shows the state support for us. And uh, they have also got high hopes on us. And therefore, Hong Kong should respond proactively and uh, positively to the development direction of our country. And we should also come up with a long term policy for arts and culture. We should also have a blueprint for that so that uh, Hong Kong will, also, will be able to um, showcase a strength under the one country, two systems. And we should also become um, a cultural metropolis. And uh, we should also become a, cult a cultural metropolis so that we'll be able to tell a good story of uh, China so that uh, Chinese culture can also be um, better. Uh, developed. Well, Hong Kong has always been a place where the East meets the West, um, and um, we have also got world class uh, cultural hardware. Well, if you look at uh, the Victoria Harbour and also the West Kowloon Cultural District, uh, it's the largest um, cultural project in the world. And last year, we have seen the uh, commissioning of M Plus Museum, and that's we also have the Visual Arts uh, Museum. So that has also um, um, been a milestone for Hong Kong's arts and cultural development. And um, the Hong Kong Palace Museum, which is to be commissioned shortly, is also a world class uh, museum. And we would also be able to enjoy the, adva the geographical advantage that we are able to uh, connect with the mainland. And we would also uh, provide a very good platform for cultural exchange, regrettably. Arts and cultural development in Hong Kong has been criticized uh, for the fact that uh, we only have the hardware but not the software because Hong Kong's uh, cultural policy has been very uh, piecemeal and uh, is scattered around different uh, policy bureaus and uh, under that situation uh, is not very visionary. Therefore, all along, we have heard uh, voices saying that we should set up a dedicated bureau and the existing term of government has proposed that we should have a new culture, sports and tourism bureau that has uh, represented a very important step forward. And uh, we should also develop ourselves uh, into a cultural capital so that uh, we should promote uh, cultural um, innovative uh, cen center and that would also become the uh, locomotive for our economic development. So I hope that we can have this new positioning. Well, globally, uh, cultural development can also become um, a um, locomotive for economic development and uh, tourism and uh, cultural development can also uh, help boost uh, the economy. And that would also become a very important indicator for economic development. The 14 five year plan has also expressly stipulated that uh, tourism and culture should be merged and uh, should be developed together. And we should seize the opportunity. And we should also develop a diversified cultural tour so that um, we'd be able to make use of uh, uh, culture and uh, develop uh, 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 tours uh, accordingly. And um, creative industry has also been developing in leaps and bounds and also digital arts and also um, innovative uh, cultural development would also become very important. And therefore, we should make use of uh, big data and also blockchain technology in order to further develop our potential in those areas so that Hong Kong will be, will be able to gain a better place uh, so that I would be able to showcase our cultural soft power. And uh, the young people would also be able to uh, uh, lay the foundation for us. We earnestly hope that the new term of government will be able to attach more importance uh, to the social value of arts and culture. We should also come up with a comprehensive uh, arts and culture policy as well as a blueprint for development. We should also set um, the target as well as the roadmap. And we can also position ourselves uh, 
in the GBA and uh, has sufficient have a vision for uh, in, for the international development. Thank you, Mr. Chen Yong. Thank you, Madam Deputy. We give strong support to the motion moved by Mr. Vincent Chang. Now, uh, in relation to the um, top echelon of the U.S. government, they also agree that the Chinese culture and the is where the cradle of culture is for the world, and we are, after all, descendants of the Chinese nation, and we should be proud of our culture. The CE elect, Mr. Li Ka Chiu, mentioned in his election manifesto that we should create a cultural capital and uh, give growth impetus to the creativity, uh, creative industries. And his manifesto includes promoting the development of the cultural and creative industries so that we can rebuild our brand and expedite our development into an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. We're all looking forward to it. At the same time, it has always been the DAB's suggestion that we should tell Hong Kong's story and the, our nation's story well. We also have a, um, a submission on this. We should enhance Hong Kong people's sense of national identity, and we should also know more about our culture, including the cultural content of the history of Hong Kong, um, the major incidents that happened, including how we fought the uh, Japanese aggression. And we also need to tell the nation's story well. And I understand that um, the Home Affairs Bureau has done a lot in this regard. In particular, I'd like to enhance the promotion of a Chinese culture, and we should also step up our effort in uh, promoting Chinese culture outside Hong Kong and tell our story well so that we can um, leverage on our advantages and align with the rest of the world. Just like the export of culture by Mr. Bruce Lee, the renowned um, martial arts uh, practitioner. And at the same time, we should be discerning. We do not accept um, the incitement of hatred. For example, in the Hong Kong uh, Coastal Defense Museum, in a story about uh, anti-Japanese uh, war aggression, uh, some exhibition panels were actually prepared by contractors. And of course, we are all angered by uh, what happened uh, in Hong Kong and the Japanese uh, military flag, uh, so on and so forth. And that, because of uh, misleading information, our descendants would be misled. And we find it unacceptable to display um, artifacts representing the Japanese army. So we need to make sure we know which side we're on and that by telling our story, we are instilling positivity in the minds of people and that we should all stand up against fasc um, fascism so, or fascist ideology. So we need to be discerning about the accuracy of the story we tell and whether we are able to promote Chinese culture. The other point is that as we hold exhibitions, we want to um, transfer knowledge to our next generation, and we should step up our effort. Ms. Judy Chan. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak in support of the motion moved by Mr. Vincent Chang and the amendments moved by other members. Madam Deputy, as far as arts and culture are concerned, they are unique and it's a kind of a soft power showcasing the vibrancy and the strength of a, con uh, of a city and it helps us enhance competitiveness around the world. Earlier in the 14th five-year plan, the central authorities 
categorically support the development of Hong Kong into an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. We are a more, uh, modern metropolis and we have the edge. And therefore, we must grasp the opportunities and formulate a suitable policy direction for the promotion of arts and culture in Hong Kong. It is our duty to leverage on the soft power presented via arts and culture so that we can tell China's story and Hong Kong's story well, so that we can promote uh, the uh, uh, promote Chinese culture and tell our story well. Madam Deputy, all along the arts and culture industry have been fighting hard uh, in Hong Kong. Uh, however, without adequate policy support from our government, many practitioners in the creative industries find it hard to go on in order to fulfill their dreams. It is the government's duty to help them tap new um, development opportunities and to give them a boost so that Hong Kong can become once again the uh, capital of culture and creativity. Hong Kong people are well educated and they have um, in-depth understanding of art pieces and, and artwork. And if we're able to promote arts and culture in Hong Kong, then I am sure that uh, overall speaking will be able to cultivate a high level of literacy in Hong Kong. Now, the government has uh, provided a lot of facilities, such as the West Kowloon Cultural District and also the uh, Hong Kong Palace Museum, which members visited yesterday. These are all very good facilities, and they are sitting here uh, all ready for our use. However, it seems we do not have the locomotive to really bring vibrancy to our sector. In other words, we have the necessary hardware, but not the software. Now, for example, in Wong Chuk Hang in the Southern District, it, um, there is a community of arts and culture. Inside the old uh, industrial buildings, we find art galleries, uh, art studios, workshops. And these are places we can further explore as far as arts and culture is concerned. And the government has also put forward invigorating the, the island south and the government should therefore pro provide greater support to them. For example, we can make use of the space in Ocean Park for them to give performances so that at the community's level, the general public will be able to get a feel of their creativity. So in order to promote arts and culture in Hong Kong, we need to map out the development blueprint on arts and culture, and there should be more activities organized for our artistic practitioners and aspire, uh, aspiring young people. There should be more exchange tours for them to get a better understanding of uh, Chinese culture. And there should also be more exchanges with uh, the rest of the world so that our young people have more opportunities to connect themselves to the world. If you were able to industrialize the sector and the modernize the sector, we'll be able to create a proper industrial chain. And in the process, we will be able to couch, uh, cultivate more talents and we'll be able to tell the rest of the world and give them more opportunities for international cultural exchange. We can also promote Hong Kong and promote the development of tourism in Hong Kong. It's a win-win and I hope the government will uh, look squarely into the development of arts and culture and place more emphasis on uh, nurturing talents and providing policy support. I so submit. Mr. Michael Look. Thank you, Madam Deputy. I speak in support of Mr. Vincent Chang's motion and the amendments moved by six members. Now, if the development blueprint on arts and culture can incorporate views of members together with a strong government, then I think we'll be able to fulfill the objective of Hong, being Hong Kong being the East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange as set out in the 14 to five year plan. However, it's just castle in the air if we're not able to have exchanges with the rest of the world and with the mainland. And I can't help but uh, think of um, what's said by uh, 
uh, Wong Gak Hoi and beyond. He who once said that we did not have um, an arts and cultural scene in Hong Kong, we only had the entertainment industry. And as far as education is concerned in recent years, we have placed much emphasis on STEM. But instead of STEM, we should include arts in STEM as well so that it becomes STEAM. The CEO elect Mr. Lee, John Lee responds positively uh, to this suggestion in his election manifesto, and we look forward to, to that. Now, as far as arts and culture is concerned, there are various forms uh, of um, performing arts, film, uh, literature, so on and so forth, and it also touches on history, uh, literature, uh, geography. So STEAM is not just about organizing a few activities. It's about a long-term development. We need to make people learn more about Chinese culture in order to enhance a sense of national identity among them so that we can find our root, so to speak, and contribute to the country's development and rejuvenation of the Chinese nation. And we also need to train more elites as far as uh, arts education is concerned. The Hong Kong APA provides uh, tertiary level courses and uh, competition is keen because of various reasons. Uh, it's not conducive to grooming more talents. I suggest that we should draw on the reference, um, draw on the experience of the mainland, and that starting from secondary schools, we should have dead, uh, courses dedicated to arts, uh, special arts classes in schools, and that we should make arts a professional subject. We should bring this subject on a par with other academic subjects so as to build a good foundation so that uh, the, these vocational schools will go parallel with uh, grammar schools and that there would also be an um, exchange mechanism so that we provide a revolving, doors, uh, revolving door for the uh, students. Now, just now I talk about the STEAM Foundation. After cultivating young artists, we also need to combine arts with technology. We should make wider use of technology in exhibitions, concerts, and NFT, metaverse, so that we can foster the establishment of an exchange platform and that the tourists can join our artistic activities even overseas to bring more diversity to the scene. Finally, I'd like to speak on my take uh, on arts and culture. The Greek philosopher Plato once said that arts strongly affects a person's uh, personality, and bad arts would um, adversely affect a person's character. And for good art, it will drive people to pursue greatness. Uh, and it's just like Chinese culture. It's about... Uh, in, in building your own personality and in a seminar um, our country's leader said that uh, art also relates to a country's development so it's not just a form of expression it's not just an opportunity to build an industry after all it's about personal development Art is a form of expression. It's also the impetus uh, driving the growth of a society. And it's also the basis on which we can stabilize our society. And that is why we should have cultural confidence and that it should be put in our development blueprint. I so submit. I'm not Hang Yi Yun. Dr. Tan Yu Hong. Good afternoon, Deputy. In the past, the Hong Kong culture in the past were led by several departments, and there's no coordinated cultural policy. And led to our Hong Kong arts and culture scene lacks an overall steer and lacked uh, uh, planning. For this term, next to Gaffer would, uh, well, uh, to reorganization into culture, sports, and tourism bureau. 
Therefore, I support the member's motion today that we need to have formulated a policy and development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years and also agreed with the amendments moved by other members. There are a few suggestions for me. First, Hong Kong to turn into an east-west center for international cultural exchange should not just focus on the events. It's required an all hands on deck by enriching our arts and culture education to enhance our arts and culture temperament instead of just promoting as some kind of a, a narrow circle activities. And we need to integrate the best of the East and West as our unique advantages. However, currently the Hong Kong's culture may be focused too much on the Western aesthetics while neglecting Chinese culture. Therefore, I suggest that the government must step up education on Ch Chinese culture education culture as well as at enhancing our arts appreciation, especially on the fundamental education for primary and secondary school students and boosting its curriculum hours and learning experiences so as to deepen the student understanding on traditional Chinese culture. Second, Well, uh, well, to turn it into an arts and culture mecca very much depends on the import of talent. The four universities in Hong Kong have a designated art schools or the relevant faculties, as and however subject to the actual demand, the tertiary institution should consider uh, uh, add or establish. Uh, more uh, art specializations, for example, uh, art appraisal and, and art curation and so on, and others that can complement the upstream and downstream industries. At the same time, when attracting talent, the government can consider more facilitation measures to streamline the talent to perform an exchange in Hong Kong in terms of visa arrangements or even settle in Hong Kong in order to attract more mainland and overseas arts groups and art talent to work in Hong Kong. And thirdly, that where available, we, we consider set up a arts exchange uh, a body. If we do not have the means there are a dozen or so uh, uh, Hong Kong ETO networks uh, in the mainland and in the world that wish that we can um, help them set up a cultural exchange uh, personnel in this ETO office, which helped the Hong Kong talent to crack the mainland market and go global. And finally, Uh, to integrate financial industry and the arts and culture industry. Hong Kong is a key financial hub globally, and it's also our core advantages. And to become an East and West uh, center for intellectual culture exchange, we need to have a whole full production chain and for industrialization can allow us to, to develop the sector. And, and also we need the help and the support of the financial industry. And therefore, uh, we creating more financial services and product will require the close cooperation between the arts and the business sector. And I suggested that banks uh, should uh, launch more loan products catered to the arts industries. And finally, the government should uh, set up more industry fund for the arts and culture. And finally, it's being so we need to set up an art exchange. We need to uh, attract more uh, list companies to list in Hong Kong. Um, Ms. Dr. Tang, your time is up. Please stop. Ms. Eunice Young, I speak to support Mr. Vincent Chek's motion in formulating policy and development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years. Hong Kong is a very charismatic East and West uh, metropolis. National 14th year plan states that, that supporting and turning Hong Kong into arts and culture exchange hub and the national support uh, 
is the main impetus uh, to seek a new positioning for future development and confer a new advantage and bring new opportunities for the youth and development. The arts and culture industry includes a multiple aspect in the social economic spheres and able to create lots of job opportunities and provide new momentum for economic development. Hong Kong creative industries uh, uh, comes in different spheres. We have the, the Star Avenues as well as the Promenade and PMQ and, and so on. And while the Hong Kong Film Entertainment Expo and the Business of Design Expo is also hugely influential in the world. We see that this reinforces Hong Kong's status as a creative capital. In advertising construction, a digital entertainment, a film entertainment, publishing, and music and television, all these eight creative industries will bring Hong Kong on the path of a diversified economy and become a highly valued at, at this. Well, the well, we now have new positioning to turn into an East and West Center for International Cultural Exchange. The government should be based on the 14th of year plan to come up with the arts and culture policy and blueprint for the next five years so as to unleash our advantages and as to bring vitality to the industry. The government proposed to set up the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau. This is a very important step. The CSTB can coordinate all the resources and enhance the in at the level of uh, interaction and exchanges for the five year plan it should uh, focus on uh, the tradition our uh, traditional foundation chinese culture has been the bedrock of our culture and where the charisma lies the government can make use of traditional facilities to organize large scale celebrations to showcase our culture so as to enhance our, our recognition on home and abroad and also Hong Kong pride itself on its diversity the government should formulate policies to enhance diversity at the same time in terms of uh, diversity we need to highlight uh, the traditional Chinese culture so that uh, there will be a, a, cl a clash and mingle of the traditional Chinese culture and uh, new cultures for the five year plan would make use of our low and simple rate and tax system and to attract the international galleries and artists to expand their presence in Hong Kong by providing support for them and provide uh, private wealth management services for art collectors and turning Hong Kong into an art exchange platform and become the arts trading hub in Asia and Asia Creative Hub as well as the East and West uh, Culture Hub and Convention Exhibition Hub. According to the uh, GBA online development plan, it was proposed that we need to deepen the collaboration of the arts and culture industry in the area. And for the next five-year plan, it should uh, capitalize on this GBA hinterland so that the Hong Kong culture industry can quickly blend into the uh, huge potential of the mainland market. Uh, speaking of the GBA, uh, we must talk about uh, talent grooming. The government must proactively uh, to, uh, to interface with the mainland arts agencies and so as to facilitate the talent to work and study in the GB area. In conclusion, the arts and culture industry will become one of the key engines of economic growth and is also for, uh, um, part of the stepping stone in becoming east-west hub of cultural culture. The government must work strategically, which include a world-class culture facilities and diversified arts a space, and by working with a close relationship with overseas cultural institutions and consistently promote cultural exchange while capitalize on technology and mixtures of talent and seize the infrastructure of WKCD. That President Iso submitted to support the original motion all the amendments. Dr. Wendy Hong. President, I support Mr. Vincent Cheng's original motion and the amendments by other members. I suggest that the government can use of e-consumption voucher to spur development of the arts and culture industry. Since the pandemic, the government had now two rounds of e-consumption vouchers spending over $100 billion. These vouchers can help uh, stimulate consumption and will help the economic recovery. And while uh, 
bring innovation to the government. How the current way of dispersing cash voucher is just uh, pouring money from the helicopter with no target. The consumption vouchers can be dispersed in many ways and many uh, functions. It can able to stimulate short term consumption, and our uh, through uh, design can also help to grow the sort industry. For example, uh, sports culture. For example, we hope to promote the recovery of the local film industry. However, our policy support only start from the public sector. For example, subsidizing local film production. This type of top down decision may discourage theater. Uh, movement goers and there will be no market transaction. The subsidy may come to waste. If we use a, a continuing film con consumption voucher by rewarding by subsidize a local film movie tickets, there will be a pull factor and it will help form the market for a local cinema scene and it will form a complete loop. And also the uh, theaters the movies produced and can receive market feedback either good or bad and so as to able to improve the quality of our movies. While the government subsidizing film production is one way from the supply perspective. And through the film uh, voucher by subsidizing the audience, which is really from a market driven perspective, it we can work on the supply and the demand and um, the result will be much better. And this will be a very effective tool. And this can also apply to different industries as well. For example, the tourism industry has been devastated by the pandemic. In the future, can we hand out dedicated tourism consumption in the future but, but help to spur tourism development for the uh, demand driven? And we also hope to industrialize our uh, sports sector. Can we set up a dedicated sports consumption voucher, encouraging people to go to a workout or uh, to uh, uh, buy tickets to sport events? And we, can this all can, vouchers can also be to B two C as well into a B two B purchases? For example, can we use some e consumption vouchers to encourage local companies? to add more culture arts item and to uh, procure uh, arts and culture products locally so as to uh, encourage their growth. Well, the consumption voucher can be throwing money on the helicopter. However, they could also can work on a dedicated uh, policy support. These voucher can be used currently on anything. The advantages is that uh, it can meet the needs of the public. And this is not a bad way to help the grassroots in the current climate. After the pandemic, we may consider using a designated consumption voucher to help certain industries, especially to spread the public interest towards a cinema, culture, and sports, and voltage to certain kind of services. At the same time, we can stimulate public participation and enhance the uh, overall public temperament. I so submit. Doreen Kwong. Thank you, Mr. Um, President Tang. I'd like to thank Mr. Vincent Cheng for his motion. Uh, my younger son um, studied arts um, overseas well, when he was just uh, two years old. Um, um, even, um, well, he still insisted on um, drawing while he was uh, having his meal. Well, as uh, a mom, I respect uh, his decision and I tried my best uh, to nurture him. So um, he also went into a fine art um, university and um, when he decided to go into uh, arts as his uh, career, I was very pleased about this. Uh, I could see that uh, when he was um, um, choosing his uh, discipline uh, at university uh, as an undergraduate uh, student, uh, he was also having difficulty whether or not uh, he should be choosing other disciplines. Uh, so he decided that uh, instead of uh, uh, using money making as his own target, uh, he decided to go into fine arts. I think the most important thing for arts development is to nurture the talents and we should also create the right atmosphere. When it comes to hardware, and also the policy, the government does not have uh, a clear-cut policy so that uh, it would encourage students to go into those uh, disciplines and uh, they have never encouraged students to use uh, arts and culture as their lifelong career. Well, we also had this uh, 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 which set up um, an art school uh, at the uh, 
um, West Kowloon Magistracy uh, building. And um, I could also feel the atmosphere there, but then um, uh, unfortunately, it just uh, closed down in 10 years. So so there has been a lot of opposition voices uh, in the community against uh, arts development. We have to have an open uh, environment in order to uh, allow arts to boom. And many people are concerned that their creative space might be uh, restricted, uh, and therefore they are concerned. And therefore, I hope that the administration can provide an open environment so that uh, the arts and culture sector would not have um, any misgiving about arts development, because we need to have a lot of space uh, and flexibility in order to uh, encourage uh, creative arts development. I think the most important thing is for the administration to change its mindset, because in the past, uh, it did not show enough respect uh, for the arts and culture sector. Well, in a comprehensive and uh, progressive society, arts and culture play a very important role because uh, they would enable the, the society as a whole to uh, have more grace in its development. So it's not just um, um, a particular sector or industry. If we just uh, view it as such, then in the end, uh, it will be neither here nor there. And therefore, Mr. President, I support Mr. Vincent Chang's uh, original motion. I hope that the administration can summarize its uh, past experience. It should respect uh, arts and culture. It should also nurture the talents in the sector. These are my remarks. Thank you. Ms. Lydian Kwok. Thank you, Mr. Uh, President. I'm grateful to Mr. Vincent Chang for moving this motion on formulating policy and development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years. Hong Kong has a unique history, and it has become a place uh, where the East uh, and the West meet. Well, under the 14 five-year plan of our country, Hong Kong will play a very pivotal role in promoting um, arts and cultural exchange uh, between the East and West. Um, well, for years, uh, Hong Kong has also laid the foundation for this. And uh, our unique uh, local community arts culture has also been much praised. But then to become a cultural exchange center, I believe that the administration will have to do us a bit more for this so that we can have long-term planning and overall comprehensive planning and blueprint for future development. But together with many other colleagues uh, of this council, on different um, occasions we have also talked about uh, STEM education and also we should have arts education. Um, and if we were to uh, commercialize uh, arts development, then there would be um, a better ladder to climb up to for students so that uh, arts and culture can also become accessible and um, an area where people would pre be prepared to pursue their careers. But then uh, in the long run, we have to nurture more talents um, for arts and culture. I believe that uh, for elementary education, we have to increase the elements uh, for arts education. At present, when it comes to elementary education, we attach uh, more importance uh, to grammar studying instead of other disciplines. And therefore, arts and cultural development will have to become an important part of our education system. And arts education, in fact, uh, is an alternative form of learning. And we have to provide a space uh, and room for thinking so that uh, students would also be able to use their creative uh, um, uh, mind uh, to think about what is to happen. And there is no limit as to how much they can think. And uh, they can also uh, make use of their existing knowledge uh, so that they can cr be creative. So it's not just about uh, developing the potential of students um, in creativity. Our next generation of students should also be able to grow in different aspects. Arts education is very important, and therefore, on the basis of elementary education, we should uh, instill in them um, more creative thinking. But then very often schools would just uh, treat it as an elective subject. And so uh, they would just uh, provide some guidelines and a framework for them to develop. And therefore, teachers' role would be of critical importance. And yet, at present, teachers' uh, professional training in arts and cultural development has been very limited, uh, and therefore there is no guarantee that uh, our next generation's uh, arts and cultural uh, standards uh, can be uh, kept. 
Under the current mechanism, teachers do not have enough space uh, to pursue um, arts development. And therefore, if we were to develop Hong Kong's arts and culture, if we were to nurture our talents in this area, we have to face up to these uh, issues. And we have to put in more resources so that uh, teacher training can also be uh, beefed up. And there is also a lack of um, um, avenue for training uh, young kids um, in arts and culture. Yes, a number of venues have been made available. For example, the West Kowloon Cultural District, and also there are other venues uh, on arts and culture. And yet, um, we have not been able to really uh, take care of the needs of um, the children. We have to start early, and therefore, more venues should be set up, and we should look at those uh, from the perspective of children so that um, when it comes to arts and cultural development, they would also be able to enjoy better space for development. Chinese culture has a history of over 5,000 years, and um, this has never ceased to develop. So other than uh, developing them, them in different virtues, uh, and also we have uh, uh, calligraphy, paintings, and so on, and uh, many people said that we should also promote the, develop, the development of Chinese, uh, traditional Chinese culture including um, well, uh, Asian Chinese uh, costume and so on. So that would not just uh, be good for the younger generation. We, sh we can also enhance their sense of belonging. We should also take pride in being Chinese. I support the original motion as well as other amendments. These are my remarks. Mr. Leung Men Kwong, thank you, President. Uh, I'd like to thank Mr. Vincent Cheng for his motion on formulating policy and development uh, blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years so that we have this chance to develop uh, the world-class uh, 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 hardware of the West Kowloon Cultural District uh, as well as other issues. Well, the WKCD has been developed uh, because we need to have uh, a venue in order to attract visitors uh, so that uh, we can also organize uh, mega events on arts and culture. We can also enhance our cultural competitiveness. Well. During the past 10, 20 years, when we developed the WKCD, we only uh, concentrated on the discussion of the uh, project and also the hardware. But then uh, there has been no planning whatsoever on the blueprint for development for the uh, software, that is, uh, net talents. So for the arts and culture industry, we would also need to have a synergy effect uh, with our neighbors. Uh, so that uh, we can also build uh, a basis uh, for community culture, so that we can also uh, get uh, uh, the like minds to come. Well, under the 14 five year plan, Hong Kong is to become an arts and cultural exchange center. This is a place where the East meets the West, uh, and we should also gather together all the talents from all over the world. Uh, that could also uh, mean that Hong Kong will become a platform for such exchange, and there could also be collaboration so that international arts can also be introduced into Hong Kong. We can also uh, take Chinese culture out. So with the um, commissioning of the WKCD, we will have to take advantage of that so that uh, the entire area can also be developed into a tourism and um, cultural district uh, so that WKCD and the surrounding area can also attract more visitors and they can also make use of the uh, express railway and then more people can also come to appreciate art and also um, go for concerts and performances and so on. So we would also uh, develop this uh, knowledge-based uh, economy that would also enhance the ambience. And then we could also enhance our status as a cultural exchange center. Hong Kong's fashion and also textile industry have been integrated. And uh, overseas countries have also got the experience of uh, enhancing uh, culture and other areas collaboration. For example, in London, they also have the fashion college. So they would also not just be looking at uh, fashion, they would also be looking at other um, industries so that uh, fashion and other industry can also be integrated. And that would also promote the sustainable develop development of the relevant uh, sectors. So um, we can also have um, other talents are to come over to Hong Kong, and that would also create a, a good market for Hong Kong, and that would also provide a very good uh, business environment, and the ecology can also be improved, and we can also attract more funds to come to Hong Kong. And uh, the most important thing is that uh, West Kowloon can also integrate uh, different areas. For example, the Guang uh, in Canton, they also have the Chinese uh, Cantonese Opera um, uh, Center and what also we can also have the jade market. So those are also um, 
Jews of the Chinese culture, and th those are also very good example. And therefore, the express railway can also uh, mean that uh, West Kowloon could also become a hub for that, uh, and we can also encourage more exchanges there, so that we'd be able to um, provide the right conditions uh, for the district to be developed um, into a landmark um, project and development. In order to enhance uh, the interest of the public in arts and culture, in order to promote uh, such activities in Hong Kong so that we can have diversified uh, arts and cultural platform and they can also integrate arts and culture in their lives, I encourage that uh, we should also set up um, well, um, workshops um, on arts and culture and uh, more pilot schemes should also be introduced. Uh, we can also encourage uh, more participation by the public so that different sectors of the community can also enjoy arts and culture. More, we will not just be providing the uh, manpower for the uh, sector. We can also enhance the uh, uh, audience uh, ability to appreciate art, and we can also make use of uh, multimedia um, arts and culture technology so that uh, we would be able to enhance the effect of arts and culture, and they can also uh, find it easier to take root in the community. Well, given the fact that uh, we have this very solid foundation on arts and culture in Hong Kong, because of is historical legacy. We have also got our own uh, unique culture, and that would also mean that we enjoy great advantages in these areas. And uh, under the 14 5 year plan, it says that we should uh, enhance integration. We should also build a very nice uh, Greater Bay Area with uh, arts and culture. We should also provide better funding support uh, for arts and creative uh, culture, and we should also make use of resources uh, to tell a good story of China. These are my remarks. Mr. Benson, look. Thank you, Mr. President. President, I speak in support of Mr. Vincent Chang's original motion and the various amendments. Among the motion and the amendments, there is mentioning of combination of the arts and technology and youth development. So when we're talking about the development blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years, our discussion should not be limited to the current policies, but rather we should be forward-looking because we will draw up a blueprint that would affect us for the coming five or even ten years. And our young people are, of course, the users of this blueprint. The central authorities support the development of Hong Kong into an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange as set out in a 14-5 year plan. So. How are we going to incorporate our young people in the plan? And how are we going to uh, groom young talents so that we can be ready? In recent years, we call it the, uh, arts tech, that is uh, integration of the arts and technology. In 2021, we had the first uh, Asia Art Tech Expo held in Central so that people could have first-hand experience of arts technology. In an oral reply, uh, in a reply to the oral question I put today, the administration is aware of the uh, artists and creators now exploring arts creation and trading using NFT non-fungible tokens. Arts technology and uh, digital arts will be the upcoming trend, and there is a lot of concern on NFTs. Now, we know that uh, for NFTs generated by blockchain technology, uh, they cannot be changed or deleted, and that uh, the NFT artworks can be incorporated into other digital uh, art productions, such as, such as films uh, and paintings. And there would be a lot of opportunities for young people. With just a mobile phone, they could have access to digital art work, and this will greatly enhance popularity of arts among the public. So perhaps it's a food for thought for us. How do we turn this emerging trend into an industry so that we can continue to uh, give play to the um, the uh, thousand years of histories or uh, history of arts. Nowadays, many young people would like to rely on art technology to make arts more accessible to all. So when it comes to digital arts or arts tech or NFT, these are ideas that uh, can be uh, realized at the community level to attract more young people um, to join the uh, scene. 
However, we need to build an arts market if we have a market and if we have support, uh, especially support from our country, will be able to complete this um, industrial chain and that young people will be able to um, say it loud and proud that they can make a living by uh, uh, in the arts industry. I also fully agree with uh, Dr. Wong and other member on grooming talents in their amendments, especially when we want to build a new sector, we want to, we need to groom talents. Now, the Education Bureau replied to my oral question today and that according to the Bureau, uh, they will de devise policies to keep up with the times. But when it comes to nurturing talents, we can't just keep up with the times. We need to be forward-looking. So I urge the administration once again to enhance the elements on and knowledge on uh, arts technology and life planning for teacher training and also uh, consider enriching the STEM curriculum to include arts as STEAM and also bring more development opportunities to our young people via the 14 5 year plan. So I want to say this to the government. Now, when we discuss the development blueprint on arts and culture, we don't just want quick fixes. We want to have more opportunities for our next generation so as to promote upward mobility for our young people. I so submit I support uh, the original motion and the amendments. Reference, uh, Reverend Peter Kuhn. Mr. President, I speak in support of Mr. Chang's motion and the amendments moved by other members. In the 14 five-year plan, the central authorities have categorically given support to the development of Hong Kong into an East meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange. In the uh, upcoming uh, ter the new term of government, it's very likely that the Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau will be set up. So we need uh, to formulate policies now. Of course, I don't agree that we don't have arts and culture in Hong Kong. We are not in the wilderness without the uh, arts and culture. It's just that we do not have a platform to allow um, talents to give play to their potential. And when I said platform, I don't mean hardware. I mean that we should have a proper medium for them to be able to promote their artwork. The government has uh, put in a lot of resources to promote arts and culture. In 2019 to 2020, the government provided to the nine major performance groups, including Hong Kong Philharmonic, etc., uh, some $400 million of subsidy and provided $140 million to 300 um, or over $100 million to over three, uh, 300 uh, small to medium sized art groups and individuals. However, the problem cannot be solved simply by dishing out subsidies. We need to help them to be self-reliant and to build a proper uh, arts and culture uh, culture scene in Hong Kong. We also need to uh, take the lead uh, and encourage the business sector to uh, sponsor uh, them as well so that they will not be over-reliant on the government. We attach great importance to creativity and the government should strike a balance in this regard. In order to promote development of the local arts and cultural sector, as long as the artists don't break the national security law, as long as they don't um, trigger the bottom line, we should give them room to develop and that means sufficient room for diversity development of arts and culture so that we can have vibrancy um, in its development. I still submit. Members, we still have five members on the list waiting to speak. And after these five members have spoken, I will invite Mr. Vincent Chang to respond uh, to the uh, views expressed. And I've also consulted the member moving the next motion, and Mr. Chair would like to uh, start his debate tomorrow morning. So after concluding this debate, we will adjourn until tomorrow at 9 a.m. Next, Mr. Yang Wing-Kit.
Thank you, Mr. President. I speak in support of Mr. Vincent Chang's original motion that the central authorities support the development of Hong Kong into an East Meets West Center for International Cultural Exchange as set out in the 14 five year plan. This year, for the first time, we have nine projects in Hong Kong receiving national subsidy. They include the stage management, promotion, um, also nurturing young talents uh, in the creative industries and the arts industry. I am grateful so that Hong Kong can also uh, can give play to its new positioning as the International Cultural Exchange Center. We are um, we are part of the Southern China culture and we should give play to our position to promote our culture externally. The first a uh, common idol in Asia was Leslie Jung, and we can now s still uh, sing the Beyond song uh, together. And the stand-up comedian Dale Wong also um, has a very good uh, box office uh, revenue in all all over Asia. Uh, in and we also have um, successful examples of uh, artists performing. Uh, up north, and apart from that, uh, we can also consider setting up a foundation for arts and culture across three places, and we can also allow uh, more room for creativity by uh, vetting the uh, creative works. And Hong Kong can also be the host to uh, tours to uh, get an understanding of the Southern China culture. For example, we have the Fire Dragon uh, Dance Festival and other items already uh, listed in the country's uh, intangible heritage list. And yet, uh, with limited promotional uh, promotion effort by the government and with limited uh, subsidy, we did not have a lot of uh, tourists. Well, um, the Chen Shaobun Festival and the parade was suspended for consecutive three years because of the epidemic. The bun uh, in this festival represents uh, good health, and it's a, it represents the Chen Shaobun Festival. However, we failed to uh, grasp this opportunity and further promote the festival. And in fact, we can organize, co-organize uh, activities so that we uh, enhance the pro promotion effort. And we also have M Plus Museum and, we, and other projects. And then we can build a tourism brand together uh, so that we can better promote Hong Kong externally. Well, uh, we have a forward-looking chief executive who have has proposed uh, the setting up of a culture, sports, and tourism bureau. And we also have Hong Kong athletes winning uh, medals uh, in uh, international games and the Olympic Games. And Mr. Zhang Ga Long uh, even won the uh, subsequent uh, international game and became champion. But all these years, we could only promote elite sports development. And we have not been able to meet the standards of building a 40,000 seating capacity stadium. Um, even if the general public uh, have regular exercises, it doesn't mean that we have a lot of elite athletes. I think that more resources should be made available so that we have more venues for uh, sports. At the community level, there should be systemic training and more competitions should be held to help athletes acquire um, actual experience. And there should also be job opportunities for athletes at the community's level. And we can draw reference from the Tokyo experience on top of the uh, a platform for qualified athletes. There should be another platform for other amateur athletes so that they can all uh, feel the passion of sports and foster a greater sports culture. Finally, we should also set up a platform so that we can build a whole chain to promote industrialization of sports so that we can also build another um, pillar for uh, uh, as, uh, of sports as soft power. Ms. Mr. So Chen Wing, as we all know, 
that the, the 14th year plan fully support Hong Kong to become an East and West Center for International Cultural Exchange, which will be beneficial in enhancing us as a international uh, metropolis. The government should come up with the right policy and take the right action. Therefore, I support the original motion by Mr. Vincent Cheng as well as the amendments by other six members. Due to historical reasons, uh, Hong Kong has a unique advantage over mainland cities when it comes to becoming an East and West Center. And during a long history of uh, uh, cultural exchange, not only we can become a well recognized platform for cultural exchange, and also by integrating Western and Eastern creativity, and also um, against the backdrop of the support of the strong motherland, our films, a TV, animation, and music publishing to advertising, and our art design has notched up in remarkable achievements and become an integral part of the world cultural ecosystem. As we all know, over the past decade or so, Hong Kong had failed to ex sustain its advantage. Compared to the past, our arts and cultural scene has a lower penetration and influence towards the world and to China. Our cultural industries is shrinking. Well, an actor can actually shoot for nine movies at once. It's hard to regain the past glory. In view of this, if the government accepts the original motions, I come up with the five-year development blueprint. I suggest that we should focus on the following considerations. First, that the new Cultural Sports and Tourism Bureau, CSTB, should identify uh, what type of cultural facilities to be uh, uh, built, for example, like the cultural centers, for example, our external influences on the wane, and our vibrancy and the our, our, uh, our sector is also declining as well. For example, uh, we need to find a reason of decline of our music, music industry. And we need to plan aggressively to save and develop these industries too. We need to put more effort to foster the whole uh, arts industry ecosystem. Just to be impaired at the level of logistics and trade and tourism and financial industries. We equally enjoy the, the facilitation measures. The comprehensive influence by culture must make use of the market economy. In the past, the the past glory of our arts and culture, for example, the Jin Yong uh, Wushu novels, and also our films captured a global audience, and Kafei and James Wong songs and lyrics wield a huge influence. Besides the quality of their own creations, they also are able to benefit by the uh, fair uh, industrial policy. The vibrancy of the arts and culture industry can provide high quality job opportunities as well. Therefore, the government should upgrade arts and culture industry as one of our pillar industries with the right policy and financial assistance. And thirdly, when you create the right conditions to attract uh, 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 foreign cultures, for example, our universities been accepting mainland and foreign students on the rather on the low side. According to the government figures, in year 2020 and year 2021, the number of local students is about 64,000. Non-local students, only about 4,600. The proportion was about 6.7%. If the government came up with a policy to boost the enrollment of international students, and that will uh, help to expose more students to our local culture. Well, uh, exchange at the university, please stop. 
Mr. Dennis Long. Thank you, President. Well, uh, to develop Hong Kong arts and cultures, we have to do with science, especially popular science education. Hong Kong has always been a place of where the East and West and the 14th year plan expressly support and turn in Hong Kong into an East-West culture hub. We can see that there was a huge potential for our arts and culture industry. I hope that the Hong Kong government uh, can provide a more holistic development blueprint to take forward our industry development to tie in with the national development framework. The government cited the WKCD as a key pillar of our culture policy. Then we have the Sichu Center as well as Amplis Museum. And hopefully we can help to uh, industrialize our art sector. And uh, yes, our art scene uh, yet to come alive as we much criticized of lacked comprehensive planning and with scattered facilities. We lack a dedicated policy bureau to come up with a complete culture blueprint. The FTU and on, uh, already proposed of reorganizing the government to set up a dedicated culture bureau with dedicated steer on arts development. Finally, I well, in the last policy address, the government had accepted FTU recommendations by setting up the Cultural Sports and Tourism Bureau to highlight the importance it attached to this sector. The only lucky element is a clear uh, vision and action agenda to industrialize our arts and culture sector. The government should made up of the 14th and 15th year plan on the culture industry by the Ministry of Culture and Tourism. The blueprint should have provide a clear map, roadmap, and timetable for the art industries, and there should be a KPIs to gauge the effectiveness of industrialization. For example, at the proportion of arts industry to over GDP, the number of exchanges, as well as the number of activities conducted, to direct the department to work under KPIs to make truly to turn to industrialize our arts and culture sector. The government should proactively integrate arts and tech so that the popular the, the public can be exposed to arts and tech, which has to do with science education. I'll take the MT for artwork for example. LT make use of the blockchain technology to mint out non-fungible tokens. It makes use of blockchain so that others cannot do, uh, mo modify their artwork, which effectively protect the creator's IP. And currently, NFT includes uh, paintings, uh, artwork, and voice, which is a new tech form of art. The government should cease the trends by organizing different NFT exhibitions by providing them a venue to share and exchange and allow the public to understand the NFT technology and artworks. We'll help to educate the public to about technology and also help to promote intellectual property, which will be beneficial to the sustainability of our arts and culture development. The government should also proactively take forward STEAM education. Like the incoming chief executive said that this current STEM education, including an art, art element so that we can train enough art tech uh, talent and it has our education focus on the businesses even though the government have been stopped promoting STEM education but only limited to science engineering and mathematics and could not meet the demand for art tech and it's also part of the liberal arts education not just about science we should also stress on different types of arts education so are students able to have the best of the arts and science streams education? And for including arts in the STEAM education can let secondary and primary school students uh, exposed to culture at a fairly young and uh, nurturing their appreciation ability and also stressing personal imaginative skills and creativity. STEAM education not only about uh, boosting our cultural temperament and also proving talent for our cultural industry. To let them know the uh, cultural industry is one of the way out for Hong Kong with the use of the science and technology. I hope that our cultural development has a comprehensive and quality blueprint. I so submit.
Mr. Chen Pen. Mr. Chen Pen, I'd like to thank Mr. Vincent Chang for moving this motion on formulating policy and blueprint for on arts and culture for the next five years. Uh, culture is very important to any place, especially Mr. Chang mentioned that to know more about Chinese culture and promote Chinese culture from familiarity to acceptance to enthusiasm is a process. Culture is about life and about the uh, co collective experience. The culture experience through literature and medicine and arts and religion and lifestyle. Hong Kong is a Chinese dominated society. For over more than a century, the Chinese culture has been repressed and restricted. I would like you to cite two examples. First, on Chinese medicine. For over a century or so, the status of the Chinese medicine is described about a herb stellar. Until after the handover, we started to have a Chinese medicine petitioner ordinance. And the Chinese medicine practitioners become more widely accepted. Even though Chinese medicine is more than a thousand years of history, it's only in Hong Kong. It's only twenty-five years of history. One of the key pieces of a Chinese culture have been forgotten for more than a century, since they suffered from low status and therefore it's hard to inspire public confidence. That key part of the Chinese culture is medicine, and yet is not accepted by the Hong Kong populace. Well, for Chinese herb sellers, of course, uh, they could not be accept a poverty establishment. And the register not that they are registered. Does that mean they are widely accepted? That's not the case. As so of now, our Chinese medicine are still run by the NGOs, and could not become formal part of the hospital authority system. In the past few years, I've been lobbying Chinese medicine to be accepted by the government or even become part of the mainstay in the public health care system. Most recently, the, the finally the Chinese Medicine Development Fund of 500 million. And so now even, even the pandemic, we can, can you see the Chinese medicine being accepted? Not at all. Does well? Does that show that we need to put more effort into promoting Chinese culture? They are regarded as inferior, as unscientific. Second question: Religion. Well, the Western history is the history of religion. History and politics are intertwined. The Chinese culture also can. Fused with Confucianism and Taoism and Munchism in every street in Hong Kong, even with the the CBD, you can see a lot of churches. But ever in this commercial district, have you ever noticed how many Taoist temple or the Buddhist temple occupying prime locations? That's quite rare. Currently, our Chinese temp temples, even though some temples wish to promote Chinese culture or traditions, there are a lot of uh, constraints or even face a lot of obstacles. If you look at a Chinese temple ordinance, you can see everything is regulated by the government. Even if you want to build a temple or to uh, Provide service. Everything has to go through the government, and all the temples are government property. For example, uh, the Baptist Incorporated Ordinance. You co you compare the two, the Chinese temples. A uh, true status, they are completely neglected. I hope that the incoming administration. If. It, to form the Cultural Sports and Tourism Bureau, I hope that it can attach the right level of attention that help to promote Chinese culture and uh, daily life and 
even and make the people fond of Chinese culture, I so submit. Yu. Ms. Nixilan, President, I support both the original motion as well as the other amendments. So when we hear about um, Hong Kong being a place where Eastern and Western cultures uh, meet, uh, we talk about uh, how we can go out. In fact, in order to uh, do a good job in promoting Hong Kong's arts and culture, in order to deliver uh, uh, the task uh, that has been given to us uh, by the central authorities, we should not just uh, be working on the body, but also on the soul. And therefore, in order to make sure that uh, there will be integrated development and how we can create the right ambience and environment, then uh, it would take the government uh, to work harder. Yes, uh, on um, environmental protection, we can also have a green community in every district. How, how come we are not able to do the same for arts and culture? In fact, I've been talking to some residents and uh, they are also of the view that uh, there are special venues uh, with characteristics. For example, we, you would not be uh, uh, seeing uh, mimes uh, um, in uh, Broadway, and therefore there are so many performance venues. How come we are not able to have a more coordinated approach when it comes to uh, the use of performance uh, use of performance venues? Because uh, in Chin Wan Park, uh, we once organized uh, the uh, promenade uh, uh, Chinese uh, 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 symphony uh, performance because so many children are not able to go to LCSD uh, venues to. Uh, listen to Chinese music concerts, uh, and therefore they can always go to parks to enjoy Chinese music. And therefore, we can make better use of these venues. We can also make use of uh, shrines and also temples uh, in different districts so that, that there can also be a dialogue between religions uh, and culture. And uh, we can also allow a blossoming of different uh, religions in Hong Kong, and that's something that the administration can do. And we do have a lot of resources which have yet to be tapped into. I think the most important thing is about our talents. And the government's uh, task is to provide a platform so that for those who are interested and those who are talented, they can also choose their paths uh, early. For example, you can see that uh, their future is bright uh, and uh, in the uh, arts and culture market, we do have a very promising future. The most important thing is how we can pave the way for the uh, young people to uh, go there. And uh, yesterday, I also joined our colleagues up in our site visit uh, to the Hong Kong Palace Museum. I can see that uh, Hong Kong has become a place where these uh, uh, Chinese uh, uh, treasure can also be displayed. Uh, I hope that um, in more in the years to come, we can also have our own uh, talents. And then uh, this is also the center where we can develop um, such um, talents. These are my remarks. Thank you. Mr. Vincent Chang, you may now speak on the amendments. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I thank Mr. Kenneth Falk, Dr. Stephen Wong, Mr. Yu Pak Lau, Mr. Sunny Tan, Mr. Martin Kwok, and Mr. Lee Chen Ko for moving amendments to my original motion. And the 35 members just now also expressed their views, and I'm grateful. Mr. Kenneth Falk's amendment involves digital transformation and protection of IP rights for the arts and culture and upgrading arts technology and engaging the ETOs in the mainland and overseas to assist in um, the promotion. And in particular, I support uh, protection IT, IP rights um, because uh, we need to catch up with the rest of the world. Dr. Stephen Wong's amendment is in line with my own, uh, including the building of a digital platform and development of a cultural and creative ecology, helping the industry uh, undergo digital transformation. This is also in line with my original motion. I also agree that we need to build digital infrastructure and that we should have a IP platform and leveraging on our relationship with the Greater Bay Area. We can further promote uh, other aspects and we can also um, bring in investments in relation to Mr. Yo Pak Long's amendment. He mentions more cultural tours and improving cult tourism auxiliaries at cultural and community facilities. I am all in support. So the upcoming bureau should consider combination combining tourism with culture to give play to the unique characteristics of Hong Kong, in particular for tangible and intangible 
heritage and how they can help in promoting tourism in Hong Kong, including the Fire Dragon Dance in Taihang. Uh, Mr. Sunny Tan's amendment relates to enhancing support for local fashion designers to promote Hong Kong's fashion design brands. Fashion is one form of artistic expression and uh, in support of this idea and I also took part in the establishment of a fashion base in Sham Shui Po in the past and I think this will be a good starting point for promoting arts and culture. Now Mr Ma Fung Kwok also agrees that we need to set up a committee or commission to help formulate and review policies on cultural and creative industries and a dedicated arts and cultural exchanges development fund should be set up. I support that as well. Mr Ma also referred to the examples in Macau, uh, such as the setting up of an arts and culture development fund. And in fact, I also made reference to practices in Macau in drawing up my original motion. Finally, Mr. Lee Chen Kang's amendment uh, there should be a um, commission to oversee the, uh, the implementation of policies. We need to combine tourism with culture as well. So in terms of um, implementation details, there should be extensive consultation uh, with uh, the arts and cultural sector and logical members. Finally, I understand that the business su sector supports development of arts and culture as well. In the future, I hope there will be wider participation of the business sector and that there will be more um, subsidies or concessions for the business sector to chip in as well. Finally, I thank the 30 plus members who have spoken. I've learned a lot today and will continue to promote this aspect. Secretary for Home Affairs. President, again, I would like to thank the motion by Mr. Vincent Chang, as well as the amendments moved by the six members, and the uh, views and suggestions by 30 other members. The improvement of the system is crucial to cultural development. In January this year, the chief executive introduced to the LegCo in detail the proposals of the restructuring of the SAR government, including the establishment of a Culture, Sports and Tourism Bureau, CSTB, to consolidate the cultural, creative industries, sports and tourism portfolios currently under different policy bureaus, and to strengthen steering and promote the long-term development of Hong Kong's cultural industries. I've also noticed the chief executive elect has indicated that he will generally adopt the package proposal. The current government will fully cooperate and submit the relevant proposals and necessary legislative amendments, staffing proposals, and funding applications to LegCo as soon as possible, with a view of the smooth operation of the new government structure on July 1st. With strong support of the central government and the leadership of the new policy bureau, the government will adopt the five strategies I described in my opening remarks to properly promote the new positioning of the East-West Culture and Artistic Exchange Hub. Next, I will introduce in detail of the specific policies and measures of the government under the, these five strategies. First, building world-class cultural facilities and multicultural spaces. Diversified and different scale cultural spaces provide various types of foundation to cultivate artists, practitioners of art troops and audiences, and create multi dimensional art. The West Kowloon Cultural District is the largest cultural infrastructure in Hong Kong history to date, built and operated by the West Kowloon Cultural District Authority. The Sichu Center Arm opened in 2019 is responsible for promoting development, promotion, and, inher and the inheritance of Chinese opera, one of the world's intangible cultural heritage. The free space opened in the same year provides a world-class stage for contemporary performing arts. And the Larry's Theatre Complex opening in 2024 will provide a well-equipped a high-end performance venue for performing arts such as dance and drama. In addition, 
the Amplus Museum, which showcases contemporary visual culture, was also opened in last November, with over 380,000 visitors in the first two months of its opening. The Hong Kong Palace Museum, which is strongly supported by the Central People's Government, will be opened in the middle of this year. By then, everyone will be able to catch a glimpse of rare national treasures. These two unique world-class museums, together with the expanded of the Hong Kong Museum of Art reopened in 2019, will stand together on the Sim Satri waterfront to form a world-class museum cluster. These three museums will actively strengthen cooperation with the mainland overseas institutions, promote cultural and artistic education, nurture museum talents and administrators, and build a rich talent pool for Hong Kong and the mainland. The LCSD provides a number of key cultural facilities throughout Hong Kong, including 16 performance venues and 14 museums, two visual arts centers, and a film archive. The East Kowloon Cultural Center, EKCC, will be opened in phases by the end of next year. And while the pre-construction works of the Northern Metropolitan Cultural Center in Fan Ling are nearly completed, and the funding application for the physical works is about to be completed. In addition, the government is carrying out a number of major museum projects, namely the new Heritage Conservation Resource Center and the expansion of the existing Hong Kong Science Museum and the Hong Kong Museum of History. These cultural facilities will help strengthen exchanges and cooperation with cultural institutions in the mainland and around the world. In addition to world-class culture and artistic facilities, the SAR government is committed to create diverse cultural and creative spaces in various districts and through the revitalized historical and old buildings as unique cultural carriers so that culture and creative atmosphere permeates each district and create a culture and creative atmosphere so that citizens have more opportunities to uh, expose to culture, art, and creativity. For example, by preserving and revitalizing historical buildings to create new uses for them. Many of these historic buildings have been converted into cultural and creative landmarks and have won many important international awards. For example, Tai Kun Museum of Heritage and Art, PMQ, and Central Market are three groups of historical buildings located in the heart of the CBD in Central. In addition, through the Revitalizing Historic Buildings Partnership Scheme, the government cooperates with NGOs to revitalize and reuse government-owned buildings in innovative ways. There are many cultural projects such as the Zhao Zong Yi Academy, Ho Pa Music, and the Blue House Cluster. Victoria Harbour is an important natural heritage of Hong Kong. In recent years, the Hong Kong SL government has been committed to creating the Victoria Harbour waterfront as an open space with its own characteristics, at the same time showcasing cultural creative arts shared by the whole population. The SL government's goal is to extend the waterfront promenade from the current 24 kilometers to 34 kilometers in 2028, providing about 35 hectares of waterfront space, which will continue to incorporate more art and cultural installations to enrich the cultural flavors. Revitalizing industrial building transform old style buildings into diverse spaces that better meet the needs of modern industries. There are many successful examples that can achieve both innovation and conservation, such as the Mills and the Jockey Club Creative Arts Center. Through the wholesale conversion, many old industrial buildings can also become art spaces, providing spaces for artists and art troops to work and rehearse. Under the current industrial building revitalization scheme, 
an additional condition has been added to exempt the fee waiver of wholesale conversion. That is, the owner must devote not less than 10% of the floor area for the purpose specified by the government after the conversion is completed, such as cultural arts related use. Two, strengthening relations with overseas arts and cultural institutions. We will actively strengthen ties with overseas arts and cultural institutions in an all around way, further enhance our status in the international arts scene, giving us more space and channels to promote Chinese culture and increase opportunities for local artists and art groups, as well as giving citizens more opportunities to experience uh, global culture flavors. After years of hard work, the cultural ties between Hong Kong and the world run broad and deep. The SL government has signed memorandums of understanding on cultural exchanges and cooperations with 20 countries, including many cultural major powers, laying a solid foundation for exchanges between China and the world. And the LCSD and the HAV have been in contact with the various councillors in Hong Kong. Such as the La French May at Art Festival, My Italian Italia Mia, and Korean October Cultural Festival, and the Asian Ethnic Cultural Performances. In terms of promoting performing arts and cultural exhibitions, we organize Hong Kong weeks in different cities around the world, arranging local artists and art groups to perform abroad and invite well-known artists and art groups to perform in Hong Kong to organize and support different genres and themes, performance activities and art festivals, including New Vision Art Festival, Chinese Opera Festival, an International Variety Carnival, etc. In terms of exhibition, the Hong Kong Museum of Arts has a rich collection of Chinese cultural relics and paintings including Chinese calligraphy and painting, historical paintings, the world's largest collection of Master Wu Guanzhong and Ming survivors, providing an important base for Hong Kong in international cultural artistic exchanges. In recent years, the LCSD has organized large-scale exhibitions with world-renowned cultural institutions such as the Lavoux in France, the, the Italy Uvesi Gallery, and the Centre Pompidou in Paris. In addition, the SR government will continue to organize large-scale and international global cultural forums, including the Asia Cultural Cooperation Forum and the International Museum Summit Forum to be held this December. The SL government has been actively promoting cultural exchanges and cooperation between Hong Kong, mainland and overseas cultural institutions. From 2018-19, the recurrent funding for cultural exchanges will be gradually increased to $15 million per year and cooperation with mainland municipalities, overseas governments, and cultural institutions will be strengthened. The government will continue to support the Hong Kong Art Festival with a history of almost half a century to expand its scale and influence by presenting a large number of excellent and overseas programs in Hong Kong every year. It will develop into arrival to the Edinburgh Festival Venice Biennial and the Avignon Art Festivals. And this will uh, spread the cultural atmosphere all over Hong Kong and attract high end tourists. In order to further consolidate Hong Kong's role as a cultural and artistic exchange between China and the world, as our government has allocated $42 million to hold Hong Kong first ever performing arts market within two years, to promote exchanges between the mainland, overseas, and local arts and cultural circles, and to develop a performing arts negotiation and trading market, opening up new opportunities for art groups and art workers. Therefore, 
by promoting development of the art and cultural industry. Later, when the epidemic subsided and Hong Kong and mainland re reopened our boundaries to allow personal exchanges returning to or normal, both tourists and art groups could participate in exchanges and visits in person. Hong Kong is the top choice for many well-known art exhibitions, among them Art Basel Hong Kong has become an international event for visual arts in less than 10 years since it first settled in Hong Kong in 2013. Attracting more than 200 exhibitors from many countries and regions around the world every year. And more than 100 contemporary art galleries around the world also exhibit avant-garde works by emerging artists at Art Central every year, making Hong Kong recognized as the art capital of Asia. There are currently about 50 private museums in Hong Kong. The SAR government welcomes and encourages private museums and galleries to complement public museums and promote the diversified developments of Hong Kong's culture and artistic ecology. In the recent years, many famous international auction houses such as Christie's and Sotheby's have settled in Hong Kong. Coupled with the rigorous development of art exhibitions, Hong Kong art trade and auction market has flourished. Hong Kong is one of the three largest art market in the world. According to the data from art market surveyors, Hong Kong shares in the global art market has increased from 17.5% in 2019 to 23.2% in 2020, surpassing London for the first time and only second to New York. According to the Census and Statistics Department data, the total value of imports and export of art collectibles and antiques in Hong Kong reached uh, $33.6 billion in 2020, nearly doubling from 2017. This series of economic activities related to the international art trade has indirectly driven the development of local galleries. There are currently more than 80 high-end private galleries in Hong Kong, Hong Kong implements a low tax rate and a simple tax system and does not levy custom duties while at a tax or inheritance tax on artwork. It has a sound intellectual property protection regime and can provide collectors with comprehensive private wealth management services. All these advantages make Hong Kong rapidly developing into a major global art exchange. Looking forward to the future, we'll continue to attract the mainland and world-renowned culture and exhibition institutions to Hong Kong to promote art trading to become an important part of Hong Kong's cultural industry and asset management business. And the Hong Kong Trade Development Council on the Asia IP Trading Forum has successfully I formed strategic partnerships with over 35 uh, entities and provide a 28,000 uh, listings free of charge, facilitating global buyers and intermediaries to uh, browse their listings, which will help the transactions. And thirdly, strengthening cultural exchanges in cooperation with the mainland. We must continue to expand our network to expand opportunities for local art groups and artists to achieve sustainable development. The third strategy is to strengthen cultural exchanges in cooperation with the mainland. Since 2016, the Beijing office of the SAR government has set up a cultural exchange section for the first time the government has provided funding to other ETO offices in the mainland to recruit additional local personnel specializing in cultural exchanges. The government has signed MOU or agreements 
on cultural cooperation with seven mainland provinces, municipality, and SARs, including Beijing, Shanghai, Zhejiang, Hebei, Guangdong, Yunnan, and Macau. Mainland provinces, cities, and cultural circles can take advantage of Hong Kong's convenient and accessible platform to hold more different types of cultural and artistic exchanges activities in Hong Kong and to showcase the Chinese culture to the world. The LCSD has been exchanging and cooperating with the mainland cultural and museum institutions to organize large-scale exhibition of national treasures or artworks to promote Chinese history and culture. In 2018-19, the LCSD received a total of $140 million in five-year funding to actively carry out cultural exchange activities in the Greater Bay Area, showcasing Hong Kong's culture and arts, and provide new opportunities for Hong Kong artists and art groups, while nurturing the future art administrators and program organizers. In recent years, the LCSD has staged 127 local productions on 45 sets in seven cities in the GBA area, including Guangzhou, Shenzhen, Zhuhai, Zhongshan, Foshan, Dongguan, and Huizhou. In the future, the LCST will continue to strengthen communication with different cinema chains in the GBA and work to create new brands with the cinema chains to provide more performance opportunities for our art groups. And the SL government has held Hong Kong Week in the mainland since 2019 to promote cultural and talent exchanges between Hong Kong and the mainland and deepen the understanding of Hong Kong among the mainland residents. After the first Hong Kong Week was successfully held in China in November 2019, the second Hong Kong Week was held online and offline in Guangzhou from April to June last year. The SL government is now actively preparing to hold the next Hong Kong week in Wuhan in the last quarter of this year. It will continue to deepen the mainland people's understanding of Hong Kong art groups, artists, and creative industries, and at the same time, opening up more opportunities for the later. The SAR government is grateful to the CPGs for all the major measures taken to support establishment of the SAR as a cultural and artistic exchange between China and the world. The Hong Kong Federation of Literary and Arts Circle was established in November 2020 with the support of the China Federation of Literary and Arts Circle, as well as other central ministries. And the Central Cultural Enterprise of Bohemia's Culture Holdings Limited was established in Hong Kong to integrate publishing, news, film, and television, etc. The SAR government will continue to strengthen the comprehensive cooperation with the various cultural central enterprises. Four, make exploiting technology. Fourth, through coordination of different policies and resources, we will promote the application of technology, enhancing the capacity and capability of the arts and culture sector and give greater play to creativity. With the development of science and technology, the integration of art and innovative technology has become a hot trend in art development. In the 2020 policy address, the chief executive proposed to actively promote and support development of art technology. In terms of resources, various funds or projects under relevant policy bureau of the government have set aside a total of $100 million for those who are interested in promoting art tech. As of February 2022, a total of $36.57 million has been approved for 149 arts and IT bodies to implement art tech projects. Promoting art technology can provide career and professional development opportunities for art workers and creative industry talents. And facing the digitization of global industries, coupled with the catalyst of maintaining social distancing measures under the epidemic, it's more and more important than ever to make use of technology to develop and promote culture, arts, and creativity. The government strengthens its support and assistance in the digital transformation of cultural and creative industries, 
and harness various online and offline activities and platforms to organize or participate in interregional and intersector cooperation projects. This format helped to connect new markets and also help to target new audiences and participants. Looking ahead, the SR government will devote more resources to arts and technology. Starting from this year, the government will allocate $85 million per year to support development of the East Kowloon Cultural Center, which is expected to open in phases from next year into a hub and cradle of art tech and to carry out systematic training programs. The government will also set aside $17 million to upgrade equipment of performing arts venue under the LCSD so the performing arts group can use technology more and better in their performances and to enrich the audience experience. In addition, the government has allocated $30 million to implement the Arts Tech Funding Pilot Scheme to encourage the nine major performing art groups to apply art tech in enriching their stage creations and allocating $10 million to support the Arts Development Funding Scheme encouraging small and medium-sized art troops to explore more art tech and further promote art tech development. 5. Cultivating Talents Above, I've roughly outlined the ecosystem of culture and arts, including a diverse culture and art spaces and infrastructure, boundless communication networks, creating unlimited development opportunities, employment and training progressions, and related toolboxes to enhance the skills and temperament of the industry. Then I shall move on to talent training. Talent are the valuable asset of society and the source of development. The government has been committed to nurture in human resource in various aspects, making our talent feel stronger to build Hong Kong into the cultural artistic exchange between China and the world. The government will work with a number of important partners, including the WKCDA, the Hong Kong Academy of Performing Arts, the Hong Kong Arts Development Fund, and the Hong Kong Arts Center to promote talent cultivation. The Hong Kong Academy for Performing Arts, HKAPA, is the only higher education institution in Hong Kong that provides education and training in performing arts. The APA, enjoys a high reputation globally. And the QS World University rankings by subject announced in April this year, the APA has been ranked first in Asia for four consecutive years in a category of performing arts and has ranked as top 10 in the world. In the 2021-22 academic year, the APA would train around 1,000 full-time equivalent students with an annual output of about 250 graduates. According to the 2019 Graduate Employment Survey, 67% of the respondents have devoted themselves to the performing arts and played into their strings, becoming the mainstay of our performing arts industry. In addition to the APA, Many subvented universities in Hong Kong offer courses related to culture and arts. Some will offer undergraduate courses in art tech to cultivate the talents needed by the industry. In addition, the Research Grant Council, RGC, administers a number of research funding schemes, and universities are welcome to submit proposals on art tech and other cultural studies. For example, the Arts and Creative Technology Research Project led by the Baptist University, the Platform Technologies for Symbiotic Creativity, received nearly $53 million from the RGC in July 2021. The research deliverables will include an art database, an artificial intelligence creative algorithm system, a research theater, a digital art and policy network, and 
unique creative application projects. Arts administrators are an important part of the cultural arts sector and play an important supporting role in the operations of art group. In view of this, the government has allocated a total of $150 million in time-limited funding from 2013 to 14 to 2017 to 18 to provide a total of 693 internships, scholarship, and on-the-job training cases through the LCSD and the Art Development Council to strengthen training programs for art administrators. Considering that the industry still has a strong demand for art administrators, the government has continued to allocate $260 million for the six years from 2018 to 19 to provide about 700 training places through the LCSD and the Art Development Council to nurture more art talent to support the future development of our culture and arts. In addition, as more large-scale cultural facilities are about to be completed and commissioned, the industry has a strong demand for heritage conservationists. The SAR government has allocated $37 million to provide professional training for the conservation staff of the LCSD and the soon-to-be-open Hong Kong Palace Museum in the next six years, and to increase the number of places for the Museum Training Conservation Scheme and a summer intern scheme to strengthen the training of young people and local heritage conservation in Hong Kong, restoration in Hong Kong, with more than 150 people expected benefits. And the Hong Kong Palace Museum will also cooperate with the Beijing Palace Museum to invite the Palace Museum scholars and restoration experts to stay at the Hong Kong Museum to conduct academic visits and provide expert advice for public education activities. It plans to expand its partnership to include other top mainland and international museums to promote the exchange and cooperation between the Chinese and the world. The SAR government is committed to promote inheritance and development of the Cantonese opera. After injecting $17 million into the Cantonese Opera Development Fund in 2018-19, the government will inject another $100 million in 2022-23 to strengthen support for practitioners' professional continuous development, as well as encourage innovation in short and medium forms, and to promote the long-term development of this world-class intangible cultural heritage. Every year, the LCST also commissions pr production of new Cantonese opera works and performances of traditional Cantonese opera that are not often performed. This encourages creativity and attaches great importance to preservation of the Cantonese opera traditions. And last July, the China National Arts Fund CNAF has allowed the general project applications from Hong Kong and Macau for the first time allowing art institutions and art workers to directly apply for subsidy, providing them with a broader space of development. For the first time, nine projects in Hong Kong have been shortlisted for the 2022 Art National Arts Funds, covering uh, theatrical art creation, communication and promotion, art talent training, young artistic creative talents and art creations. The results have been very encouraging. Once again, I would like to thank the nation for its support for the development of Hong Kong arts and culture so that we can better seize and develop its new position as a change center between China and the world. As the East-West Cultural and Artistic Exchange Hub, how can help the industry strengthen the international communication capabilities and make positive and due contributions to telling the Chinese story as well? With the international network and relationships with overseas culture and art institutions established in Hong Kong over the years, the SAR can join hands with the mainland through various cultural and artistic activities such as culture relics, exhibitions, art performances, creative industries, films, and international conferences 
so that people from all over the world can have more comprehensive, accurate understanding of Chinese culture and Chinese values. We can contribute to the country's international communication and public diplomacy and to present a true three-dimensional and positive image of China to people of all nations. With the positioning of the 43rd year plan and support of the central government, the SL government will expand the Hong Kong's cultural artistic industry and provide more employment opportunities for young people from a broader perspective. It will help our country build stronger soft power and also uh, develop a comprehensive national strength on the world stage. President will continue to spare no effort to implement the goal of developing into a cultural and artistic exchange under the 14th year plan, promote in the industrialization of arts and culture, and promote Hong Kong to become a vibrant international cultural metropolis. The government is very grateful to the nation for its support to Hong Kong, which is not only a recognition of our achievements, also bring endless development opportunities to the industry. Thank you, President. I so submit. Joy Chen. I will now call upon Mr. Kenneth Falk to move an amendment. Mr. President, I move my amendment. I propose a question to you, and that is that Mr. Kenneth Falk's amendment be passed. I now put the question to you as stated. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Dr. Stephen Wong, as Mr. Ken Falk's amendment has been passed, you may move your further amendment. Mr. President, I move my further amendment. I propose the question to you that is that Dr. Stephen Wong's further amendment be passed. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Yopala, as the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Falk and Dr. Stephen Wong have been passed, you may move your further amendment. Mr. President, I move my further amendment. I propose a question to you that is that Mr. Yopak Long's further amendment be passed. Will those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Sonny Tan, as the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Falk, Dr. Stephen Wong, and Mr. Yeo Pak Leung have been passed, please, uh, you may move your further amendment. Mr. President, I move my further amendment. I propose a question to you that is that Mr. Sonny Tan's further amendment be passed. Would those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Ma Fung Kwok, as the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Falk, Dr. Stephen Wong, Mr. Yu Pak Leung, and Mr. Sunny Tan have been passed, you may move your further amendment. Mr. President, I move my further amendment. I propose the question to you that is that Mr. Ma Fung Kwok's further amendment be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise their hands. I think the question is agreed by a majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Lee Chen Kang, as Mr. Ken, at the amendments of Mr. Kenneth Falk, Dr. Stephen Wong, Mr. Yeo Pak Leung, Dr. Mr. Sunny Tan, and Mr. Ma Hong Kwok have been passed. You may move your further amendment. Mr. President, I move my further amendment. I propose a question to you that Mr. Lee Chen Kang's further amendment be passed. Will those in favor please raise their hands? Those against, please raise your hands. I think the question is agreed by majority of the two groups of members who are present. I declare the amendment passed. Mr. Vincent Cheng, you have 12 seconds to respond, and then the debate will come to a close. Once again, I thank members who have spoken and staged support for my motion. I hope members will support my motion on a, formulating a blueprint on arts and culture for the next five years. And I put the question to you that Mr. Vincent Chang's motion as amended by Mr. Kenneth Falk, Dr. Stephen Wong, Mr. Yu Pak Leung, Mr. Sunny Tan, Mr. Ma Fung Kuo, and Mr. Lee Chen Kang be passed. Would those in favor please raise your hands? Those against, please raise your hands. 
I think the question is agreed by majority of each of the two groups of members present. I declare the motion as amended passed. The council will now be adjourned until 9 a.m. tomorrow.